Hobnobs. Hobnobs. Hello and welcome to the Salcast on Friday the 22nd of April 2011. Hobnobs. I'm your host, Trey. Joining to me today, Hobnob. Robert Hobnob Kemp. Hobnob. <laughs> and Zachary Burgess. I don't get to be a biscuit of any kind. Luckily. Oh no, oh no I think you'll find you are a biscuit, but... <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> He's a biscuit? I mean, I had, oh, it used to be a term, we, a derogatory term we used to call the uh, people who used to come to the establishment at which I worked once upon a time that I <laughs> don't really want to like, name drop. But it's like, we used to call, oh man, there's some real biscuits coming in here. What did that mean, like noobs or something? So you couldn't define what a biscuit was, you just knew it when you saw it. Pretty much. Oh, it's, man. It's, There's a whole like, tin of biscuits coming in here. <laughs> it's basically the general populace you don't want to be. <laughs> oh, you mean like the lump and proletariat? <laughs> or, or like, you know, regular people. <laughs> Common Damn people. those regular people. Biscuits. Yeah. <laughs> so they're, they're like digestive biscuits. biscuits. Like, well, no, they're, they're like a certain brand tea. of like. You know, you know how, you know how the sort of like trailer trash look is kind of like put in America. It's kind of like the the English equivalent of those. So you like know, chav- the sort of chavvy, chavvy, sort of chavvy, but not necessarily chavvy. Just the sort that are, you know, big people kind of count. You know, the big, right. big stupid people. So try, like trying to get around Asda today. Like get out of the way, you biscuits. <laughs> Probably would have been quite a few biscuits. Yeah. Or, or people, or, or people that often frequent the hungry horse. And yes, I'm included in that number. <laughs> So you're a biscuit. I'm probably a biscuit. Well, you just yeah. said he was a hobnob. So yeah. I'm a hobnob. Well, I called him you Robert, called me Robert Hobnob. hobnob. Yeah, so he that's, must be a biscuit. That's an inverted I'm, 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 I'm now officially a biscuit. It seems. <laughs> I've never heard. Did it, who invented well, that? Only, that? Somebody, know. some random person. Just, just people we worked with. It was just like yeah, we used to call them ripe biscuits. Oh, that ripe <laughs> Not any old biscuit. biscuits, but ripe biscuits. <laughs> Dear me. Yeah, that's uh, that's where it is. So yeah, following on from that, you're a biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to know. <laughs> good to know. <laughs> Dear me. We never went as far as trying to sort of uh, um, actually associate which particular type of biscuit they were. It's like it's not like we went up to them and was like, "You're a custard cream, mate." You're clearly a custard cream. Me? Um, you see, I'm more of a bourbon. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> yeah. Is it bourbon? Or is it pronounced bourbon? I think it's it bourbon. bourbon, isn't it? Yeah. Not to be bourbon confused is, with the liquor. Yeah, it's like American kind of whiskey, isn't it? Although Jammy Dodger is used for Cockney shit, isn't it? <laughs> Alright, you Jammy Dodger! What does that rhyme with, then? Well, not like Cockney rhyming slang, just Cockney. <laughs> oh, generally. <laughs> you know. Gen- <laughs> <Jammy> <laughs> general <Dodger>. Cockney. <laughs> <laughs> general Cockney. <laughs> for, the, for Cockneys who haven't yet um, graduated from the school of rhyming slang. Yeah, it must take a while to graduate from that one. <laughs> kind of tough. Yeah. I just like all the modern rhyming slangs, like Pete Tong and stuff. <laughs> it's all gone with Pete Tong. Yeah. Because that's incredibly modern at this point. Well, yeah. <laughs> He's still on the radio, though, isn't he? Yep. Still going. He must be old. Yep. <laughs> yep. Probably not as old as Westwood. How old is Westwood? Old. Old. <laughs> <laughs> Far too old for the job he's doing. I think he's doing Far too that. old to explode things. <laughs> Push the explosion button. <laughs> <laughs> you still do that over the track. Yeah, you got to have the air horn every day. Air horn. <laughs> Speaking of air horn, it sounds like Rick is going to get DJ Who, doesn't it? Yes, my my brother. For those who don't know, that's Rick. He will be acquiring DJ Hero, so look forward to DJ Hero related reviews in the future. Yes, because it's really cheap now. Is it? Super cheap. So now's the time. Because apparently it's great, and uh, obviously higher price of entry than most games because of the peripheral. Uh, but so um, go look on Amazon or Zavi, and it's like thirty squids. Yeah, check it out, and then you can air horn all you like with the special effect button, depending right. on the song. And if you don't have squids, regular pounds will do. <laughs> Indeed, they shall. <laughs> See, squids another one, isn't it? That's kind of quid in general. That's probably like Cockney. It originated from Cockney that hasn't graduated. I have no idea what the etymology of quid is. Do you? Do we want to start looking shit up again? Probably the internet. <laughs> it's the internet. I think it's necessary. Welcome back to the Salad Grammar Corner. <laughs> it's funnier when we don't know what the hell we're talking about, I think. <laughs> and that, it was particularly funny when everything was poignant. <laughs> like, 
Anyway. We're so life. funny. <laughs> oh, dear you. We all had completely the wrong idea of what that word meant. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Anyway. Well, it's turned out we, to be quite wait, a poignant think, cast. Yeah, I think we were just pointed there about our talking about poignant. It's for you. <laughs> you guys don't... You is this, still is not this, get it? Is this, is this recursive poignancy? <laughs> What well, we're pointing because we brought up the topic of how we were talking about points. <laughs> oh, me. Anyway, computer games. What? Again. Yeah, we've got lots to get through again, I think, haven't we? Probably too much again. Lots been happening this week. We're a bit more up to date, I think, this week, in fact, with some of our... I was trying to be up to date last time. Yeah, possibly. <laughs> yeah, alright. Well, yeah, but we're, we're, like, seriously on the ball this time. <laughs> right, well, you got... Not because we were trying to be, though. It just happened. Because we kind of just wanted to be in yeah. this case. Well, we had some uh, quite a lot to get through last time, and this time we've obviously got the big Portal 2 release, uh, among others. I might do me first, actually, because then we can always go on, because I haven't played Portal 2. So if I just talk about Assassin's Creed for a bit, and then uh, we can uh, fill the rest of the podcast with all your massive up-to-date gaming My massive? Yeah. <laughs> I can fill this cast with my massive? With your massive? Okay. Well, I played a bit more Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Whoa. As you might expect, I was I was get, I was going along, waiting for the, like the new mechanic of the uh, you know the brotherhood. push the button and the brotherhood. Yeah, literally the, <laughs> the, guild, the guild of assassins. Yeah, and at one point I was thinking this is taking forever. I went and looked at the stats timer or whatever. It was eight and a half hours, and I still hadn't got the new mechanic. <laughs> and then I immediately got it after that, like the next mission I did. So um, in the grand, you know. Uh... Given your experience from Assassin's Creed 2, how long into the game is eight hours? Uh, it's a, Assassin's Creed 2 was long, I remember. So, yeah, it'd be le- less than a, th- a third. All right, so we're talking like Red Dead style length here. Not quite, but yeah. Because I spent about 26, 7 hours on that. Right, okay. What, to, up to now? Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Uh, yeah, probably about that length then. Uh, but what well, I know, I'll see. But there's so there's tons to do. There's even more to do than there was in Assassin's Creed 2. When you go to the map, um, you know how in GTA it has like the icons for all the different missions, and then some stages in GTA there's quite a few of them available. Mm. But this, there's just so much stuff to do at all times. It's um, but there are uh, unlike GTA, there's like a clear marking of which one's going to progress the story. Is the one with the exclamation mark. Oh, okay. And uh, so there's like a clear thread of these are the main <laughs> missions. So you sort of know, don't do this one yet, do everything else. Kind yeah, of. well, yeah, exactly. I mean... Uh, the problem with that is that would probably be the way I'd play it. It's like, oh, I don't want to do that one yet. I've got all this other stuff to, to do first. So well, I'd never actually get anywhere. <laughs> well, that's true. But I find that um, it's quite nice to do to have something meaty always available so that when you get bored sort of doing... Slightly more mundane stuff like mm. assassination contracts or Borgia Towers or all the other things you've got to do. Or even just collecting the, um, you know, the uh, feathers and flags and uh, little treasures and stuff. So I usually do a bit of that until I get bored with it and then do, and then there's always a main mission on hand. Um, so that's cool. Uh, yeah, so what's going on? So. Given that you've only just got the bro button, yeah, I've got the bro button. Have you now. abused the bro button in your time that you've had it? Well, I haven't. I, I um, I've now realised that it's a good idea to because, I, because I, I've been doing the <laughs> when fights. When you push it, does he shout "Bros ho"? No, he just does nothing. It's like so you can like be completely. Uh, um, well, he does. He whistles or something, but I think when he's in sight of a guard. He, uh, like, the guard doesn't even notice, so you can sort of wander past and have your guys kill him and just be like, <laughs> like this, which is very cool. Um, but yeah, um, you, I think you should abuse it because the more you use it, the more experience they gain. I think what you ought to do really is call them in all the time and then if it looks like they're gonna get killed, then step in and save them or mm. something. But all the fights that I've used them in, they've been perfectly confident and, and dealt with them just themselves. Although you can get stuck in any time. I just thought, I kept thinking, well, I can do this fight myself. And it's like, hang on, if I deploy but if the bros, I do that, then they'll I don't level up my bros. Exactly. Yeah. But it doesn't make any sense from the story, you know, because then you're not learning the assassin skills by your leeching into the what's-his-face in the real the world. bleeding. Because you're not doing the fights then. <laughs> That's true. So, so, but Ezio so, so, is, like, pretty hardcore by this point. So. Well, yeah, because he's had the whole other game The whole other game as well, yeah. So, but yeah, in theory, you're not sinking your memories or something, or would, would, would that be it? Because you're, not you're like the skills. Yeah, because you're not being the. 
Well, you're always right because there, that doesn't actually. That's... Oh my god! I just saw uh, the Back to the Future car just drive down that uh, outside um, your house. Yeah, there is a uh, DeLorean. A DeLorean sweet. Did it have all the uh, all the bits on it? Was it just a DeLorean? No, it's I'm pretty DeLorean. sure it wouldn't. Because when you flux said capacity. when you said <laughs> the Back to the Future car, I assumed you meant one. I mean, I knew it was a DeLorean, but I assumed you meant one with all the fittings. So yeah, it it's not like, like it. you see DeLoreans every day, though, is it? They're all the, all the DeLorean common. with the like coffee mixer on the back <laughs> in the later films. That's way cool. <laughs> Definitely have that. No, I'm pretty sure it doesn't have a flux capacitor, and it's a horrible coffee colour. Yeah. In that sort of 70s, 80s grunge style. None of that. Anyway, yeah, so... Glorians! <laughs> Woo! Yes. But how it works is you get a little meter, and you have, like, three lots of assassins you can deploy, but you can activate... Is it, is it marked as the bro meter, which can have always looked like brometer? <laughs> it's basically a brometer, yeah. <laughs> it is not marked as such, but it is a brometer. Um, what's, the, what's, what's, what's the situation for fighting going to be like today? I must check my brometer. Brometer, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, like, you could deploy a three, but if you hold it down when you have all three powered up, you can activate like, triple bronze. Yes, yeah, you can activate like immediate hail of arrows that will just kill. It's like a smart bomb. <laughs> so you have a smart bomb as well, but that will use up all of your. All wait, of wait, your you things. actually have a smart bomb. Well, it, uh, or, or do you mean, or were you saying that the hail of arrows is your smart bomb? Is your smart bomb? Okay, yeah. yeah. So you hold it down, and then everyone gets all the enemy guards get immediately killed if you use up all three bars in one oh, okay. go by hail of arrows that just come out of nowhere. I was about to say a smart bomb's not exactly historically accurate. Yeah, but it's the equivalent of a smart bomb. It kills all enemies on screen or in the area. So they're yeah. pretty damn good shots to not hit you. Then. Yeah, yeah, I know it's pretty cool, uh, but uh, that does use all your power. But it, they recharge over. Not a short amount of time. Mm. But I haven't got to the point where I'm sending my guys away on contract missions to other cities. Okay. Because you don't, you don't get to see that. It's just like a management mm. metagame thing, which sounds kind of cool, but I've only just started recruiting them. And you do that by... You look at your map and there are a symbol for, like, recruit assassin, and it's always some guy who's in a fight with a bunch of evil guards. Mm. All you have to do is beat up the guards. And they're relatively easy fights compared to the ones doing the bulger house and stuff. And then uh, they say, I will follow you. Thank you for saving my life. Uh, <laughs> and all this. I will follow you. And uh, Can I offer you a coffee? <laughs> exactly. Who's a me? Well, Who's they are Italian, to be fair. Some of them are probably called Mario. Uh, anyway, so that's pretty cool. Um, although, one time I was doing one of those fights, and I had that, you know, that close quarters problem with the camera and stuff. Yeah. I had a bit like a big tree right there, and I couldn't see anything through the leaves of the <laughs> tree. I was doing this little fight, I, was, I couldn't see anything. But at least you have the other guy to help you in those situations. Quick, just defend. Defend consistently. Yeah, defend. Have a dude, like, save me. Anything. Yeah. Call in the bros. <laughs> yeah, but it did work. So basically, the game has introduced strikers from, like, beat-em-ups. Is, is what you're saying. I if, guess. Like, at any point, it's just, deploy the special. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's a pretty cool concept. And uh, I haven't really used it in stealth yet. I'm looking forward to, like, hat sneaking past while my guys deal with the guards. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Does it make sense, though, in, in the sense that, you know, you could be anywhere and, as you say, pretty much do nothing, and all of a sudden your dudes turn up? Um, Does well, that mean your dudes are stalking you at all times? Yeah, well, it is. I mean, you're always in the same city of Rome, mm. and you do have quite a large guild, of, large guild of assassins. So it makes some sense, not total sense, that they'd immediately appear. Mm. But uh, I don't know. It's just, it's just cool. But uh, it'd be like some circumstances, surely, where they're like bros, and they're like, nope, nope, no one, no one here, no, and none at all. I don't oh, know. Okay. Maybe that will happen. Anyway, so. That's all good. I see. Oh, I'm still having problems with the bloody lock-on system because, um, like, there was one mission where I had to uh, chase down this guy and uh, st- stop him before he reached his like safe house place. And he had a lot of guards on the route that he was running through. He was like a captain, and he had all these guards. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, so and in order to um, uh, stop someone who's running away from you, you need to get close enough, which means you really need to hold right right trigger in order to go into running and then hold A as well to go into sort of sprinting and then when you get near them you have to hold right trigger and press B and you tackle them mm. and then you switch to your invade and stab them to death but basically um, you know I was saying when you when you hit someone it automatically targets them yeah uh, I also noticed that if somebody hits you Don't you automatically them. target them and if you're holding right trigger when you're in the targeting mode that means you're in the very slow moving defending pose mm. so basically you're running after this guy one of his guards 
hits you, you are then Defending blocking them, against yeah. that guy. You can't move. And in order to get out of the targeting, you have to tap left uh, trigger once. But it's very easy to accidentally target one of the other guys around there. Anyway, it gets very annoying. It's like, I can't get out of... I just want to run that way and not care about how much damage I'm taking. Because I'm just trying so to get to this guy. It automatically... puts you into combat foes. Exactly. Foes. So, it's like... And, and and ideally, when you're running after the guy, you want to lock onto him. Uh, I don't know if it's necessary to lock onto the guy you want to tackle. But you can do, anyway. Hmm. Once you get close enough, you can, you can lock onto them. Because that's what you're supposed to do with the... It happened in the first game where you uh, sometimes there's like a Borgia messenger that you just encounter in the city and he runs over the rooftops and you just have to catch him and tackle and take his money or whatever. Uh, she take my money! So in that it encourages you to uh, target them. Uh, but I'm not even sure if it's entirely necessary. But it's all a bit confused and uh, I'm struggling to understand really why they couldn't have had it like said targeting in Zelda in that you hold it down and as soon as to, you yeah, release but... it, it comes out. But there must be some reason, I think, is left trigger used for anything during the combat, or...? Well, other than targeting and retargeting by clicking it in once, no. So that would suggest that they could have done a yeah. targeting system. it would. But the only thing would be have that... Have you not learnt from Zelda? I mean, in a lot of the combat, you would be holding down both the left trigger and the right trigger at the same time quite a lot. Ah. But that would so be what's holding. Oh, yeah, because that's right defend. Block. Yeah. yeah, so it would be like in Zelda where you let where you Z target with Z, and you also hold up your shield with the right bumper. Is that right? I thought holding up the shield was automatic. In, oh yeah, in, when you Z target in was Zelda. It? Is that right, Zach? I can't even remember. <laughs> anyway, never mind. Remember. Yeah, that might have been the reason why they didn't want that because otherwise you'd spend your whole time in combat holding down both the triggers, and that might be a bit wearing on your fingers or something. I'm not entirely sure, but anyway, that was kind of a pain. Mm. Uh, but anyway, anyway, but I, I'm doing some sort of big story missions, like I had to infiltrate a castle and stuff, and it's good there's loads of checkpoints, because that secondary objective, in that case, the mm. one for 100% sync, is don't be detected. Um, oh, shit. You can imagine how hard that is. Um, so I had to keep... But one problem was I got detected, uh, and it saved. And I was like, god damn, now I'm going to have to start... From the beginning, the again. because I can't revert to my... Shit, that's annoying. Because yeah. the only way to revert to your save, I don't think you can do it from the menu. The only way is to get killed. So oh, there yeah. have been cases like uh, where I've deliberately wanted to die in order to go back, which is kind of dumb. Mm. I mean, it happened when I was trying to take out one of those Borgia Towers, and... Um, Sometimes the captains run away, and in this case the captain was on a bloody horse. So yeah. if I didn't get him straight away... And I and the same thing happened whereby I accidentally targeted somebody, one of his oh, guards, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I couldn't chase him. He ran away, and it's like, oh, he's run away. He will regroup when the sun goes down. It's like, I can't, be, you know, I can't be asked to wait that long. Yeah. So I, if you deliberately die, it auto saves you before you go into one of those restricted areas. Mm. I think. So I was just like, kill me, come on, somebody kill me. In a, in a similar vein, um, I watched. I've been reading up on. Uh, Conduit 2 this week, you know, right. a, a Wii based FPS, which are always interesting because, you know, let's try and see if they can get it right. <laughs> yeah. And uh, apparently, Conduit 2 suffers from that exact same auto saving problem in that it sort of like seems to be periodic rather than location based, or like Halo, it, it's not like Halo's, you don't seem to be in trouble, uh, I'll make a checkpoint now system. It's like, you don't seem to be to trouble, in trouble, and you seem to be in an area in which you can't escape from. Uh, I'll checkpoint you now, so it's possible in that game apparently to get horribly stuck, and then the game save you at that point, which you're horribly stuck. Yeah. So, and then you have to, uh, and then there's no way to revert the previous checkpoint, um, which actually I think they kind of removed from Halo as well. They had the system back in Halo Two, I think it was, where if you died soon after your checkpoint like so many times in a row it would go an extra checkpoint back, back. that's cool to get you out of that scenario yeah um, but I think they dropped that from three in reach because if they, I, I sincerely wished at one point in my gameplay in reached when doing that fucking legendary mission that I've talked about several times now where it saved with me getting jumped by three elites at the same time oh yeah and I had to fight my way out of that snow because it just wouldn't go back to before that checkpoint and it's like damn it you've saved it just the wrong point here was that inside the covenant ship yeah, yeah. during the uh, night of long night of yeah d- during the fuzzed up sound section yeah yeah 
Mm. And it's like, you bastards. And it's like, it's a great, it'd be a great idea if most games had that, so you could actually sort of just roll back. Um, not necessarily yeah. several checkpoints, you end up with like an infinite undo in Photoshop or whatever, but so you can at least go back an extra step if, if you get yourself in the shit. Yeah. Just seems like a bit of a bit of an awesome feature that, like, as I say, because Halo 2 used to do it. Why did they take it out? Why? Hmm. Just why? <laughs> Weird. Anyway, yeah, so... So, yeah, the bros. Yeah, it's going so, pretty well. So, can, can, if you send your bros... Like, is there any sort of like random events that can happen to your bros? So, like, if you send them on contract and they did like a job dishonourably, like, they... Uh, like did something shit to the guild or something like like yeah. the entire year basically did at the start of the first they failed game. or something oh did they just fail or I don't I haven't sent them on any contracts yet so oh, I don't okay. know yet yeah. you have to ask me next time but yeah because uh, yeah. I wonder if you could like throw them out on the street so they'd be hobros <laughs> <laughs> well you do have a lot of hoes you have literally this game is literally hoes before bros because Sweet. you run the uh, courtesans before you get the Brotherhood uh, awesome. guild going on. So it's literally host before Rose. It's nice to know he has priorities. Yeah, he does. <laughs> uh, and there was one cool mission I did recently, um, and I think there will be a bunch of these, because I finally met Leon- Leonardo again. Leonardo. Leonardo da Vinci. And he's working for the Borgia because they're forcing him. And he's made all these awesome war machines for them, and you have to take destroy them. Mm. Uh, uh, but uh, they seem to be, interestingly, they're like little special side missions that take place outside of Rome. Mm. So they're like a specific environment, uh, and they're like, well, the first one they did is like an initial stealth, where you have to get in without being... Well, the secondary objective was don't kill anyone. Uh, so no, the, the, so the memory was don't you have to get to the plans and burn them without being seen. And the secondary is don't kill anyone either because of course if you can kill people uh, that makes it easy to get past the guards because you can come up behind them and kill them and then mm. you can then go past that one without him seeing you whereas if you have to leave him alive then you have to work out a route past him so that was actually quite difficult to get in and uh, then you destroy the thing and then there was one of those um, crazy rail sequences like in not rail but like in Assassin's Creed 2 like a long thin horse race and uh, oh, okay. there was even a bit where you... Uh, there was even a gun turret section. Because the war machine was literally a machine gun that he made. Like a very slow-firing Renaissance Ba-dum. machine gun. Ba-dum. Yeah. Ba-dum. And you had to shoot all these horses that were coming at you. And it was like going down the countryside and everything. It looked really cool. Uh, so, but if you played... They had guns in that era? Uh, they did have... I mean, you get a gun in, in two that's attached to your... Huh. Like a cannon that's attached hmm. to your... You don't, I don't think they really did. But uh, I think they were getting close or something. And obviously, if anyone was going to get there, it was Leonardo da Vinci. Um, but um, uh, but if you've played two, you know the sequences where you go through the race through the countryside on like a chariot and you have to stop it crashing and stuff. Mm. It was basically a bit like that. But it was pretty cool because it was a sneaky, uh, en- you know, going in and then, a, and then an action sequence. And that was all self-contained outside of the normal uh, free-roaming flow of the game. It's quite cool. Mm. So I'm looking forward to a few more of those because I think everyone will be unique. No, cool. So that's awesome. So yeah. War machine. War machines. I was a bit disappointed. I'm hoping at some point, I don't know if this will happen, but they'll ha- you know that classic Leonardo da Vinci tank design? You know, that sort of weird conical tank oh, yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm hoping that will exist and you'll get to drive it around. <laughs> but I cool. seriously doubt it. But who knows? <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah. Anyway. So that's the Any more only fopped at action? Any what? Any more orny fopped at action? Not yet, no. Oh. Uh, yeah, that was very limited use in the fir- in the two, but it was fun. And there's like an achievement for like knocking someone off, so you had to <laughs> do it at that point in the game, I think. <laughs> so you had to, because it was a bit weird, because you had to gain altitude by going under these fires that they'd set to produce hot air, so that you could. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. updrafts. Yeah, updrafts, yeah. So, so your allies set fires around Venice, and you used them to get to the place that you needed to be from your launch point. Hmm. So that was kind of cool. Yeah, anyway. I am the Birdman. I am the Birdman. So that's Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. So. <laughs> Update. Uh, the only other game I've played is World of Goo on the iPhone. And that is, Woo. that is World of Goo. So. Okay, okay. <laughs> Moving on. It's literally the same. The only, the only difference is that it's hard, sometimes quite hard to see because your finger is where, where your yeah. cursor is. Typical touchscreen yeah. problem. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but uh, so when you're attaching a goo ball into like a 
a, a lattice structure or whatever, mm. then uh, uh, in, it's sometimes quite hard to see the little faded out lines where the lattice is going to be, like the joints. But the two that it's or three that it's connected to also glow, and you can usually see them. Oh, okay. You see what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. So sometimes you have to angle your finger around so that it's like coming from above rather than oh, yeah, below. Yeah, so you can see where you are. Yeah, but it does work, and it's it's literally the same game, and it runs fine on my 3GS. A bit, probably a bit better on the 4, but... Uh, uh, presumably, has it only just come out? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm Other day, it was... Uh, yeah, on the launch day, it was uh, cheap, uh, but uh, it'd be more now, but it'd still be worth it because it's a good game, isn't it, Zeg? Pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Especially on your phone, it's not bad. <laughs> but yeah, yes. so yeah. That is kind of appropriate. Oh, uh, did, did, do you know if they've released an iPad version of it? Because I almost think yeah. that would be much better. Yeah, it was a simultaneous release, ah, I think. Good. Oh, was it one of those iTunes Plus things? I don't know what that is. Um, whenever you buy something on the Apple, on, on the App Store, yeah. If they've got like one of those buy, but there's a little tiny plus symbol. All oh, right. In the um, in the buy or the install or whatever it yeah. is, it's very small and you probably wouldn't notice it most of the time. But if they have one of those in when you've bought it, it means you can simultaneously download it for your iPad for free. They're for the, free, the yeah. other version. You've bought all versions. Yeah, I'm um, pretty sure that's probably true. I would have thought they would have gone to the length of at least of definitely making a, an iPad version and yeah, having it available on both is probably the way they'd go. Um, so, yeah. It, it's nice when companies do that because it means you're, you you are essentially because the iPhone four is pretty equivalent to an iPad yeah. and what the, and what it's capable of. Um, you know, it's nice to know that they haven't you know sort of gypped you out. You know, yeah. you, when when you if if you make the purchase later on to get an iPad based on the strength of the apps you're using on your phone, yeah, it's nice to know you then don't have to repurchase them all for yeah. another device. Yeah, that is cool. And it's like I think more more devs should definitely do that. Yeah. And it's good for Apple as well, synergy between their Damn, devices definitely. and stuff. So that's all good. Top tip for developers. Yeah. <laughs> so seeing as that seems to be becoming a sort of like a new trend to sort of have top tip. <laughs> well, or telling developers what they should do because that's that's the what we mostly do. <laughs> that's what that's what everyone has to do in like when you're talking about games. That's called we consumer know... poll. Yeah. yeah, you have you have to tell them how they fail so they can. Do better next time, but they never listen, so they never do. <laughs> it's not that they don't listen. Sometimes they do. Sometimes it's just that a lot of the times, I'm pretty sure, I've seen interviews where they're like, yeah, we definitely thought that, but mm. it would have been so hard to implement that we just couldn't get it for the deadline and stuff like that. So, uh, But even so, it's fun to point out. So I wonder, that are annoying I wonder, about brilliant games. Actually, that's a very that's a very interesting point. I do wonder how many people in the industry actually go out of their way to like listen to a... Uh, you know, like getting the like the bombcast or or, yeah, or or this fine podcast <laughs> or, um, or someone else. You know, just for see what generally is going on that much. Because I think developers read reviews of their own things if they can stand to look. Yeah, uh, I think then I think a developer would be more likely to read a review of their game than <coughs> an actor would be to read a review of their performance. Performance, yeah. yeah, because there's more specific things they can think. Oh, okay, I can do. I that suppose when time. you're just it's one developer suggested. on the team, it's less a reflection on you personally. Yeah, exactly. If the entire project is considered a duff. Yeah. Whereas you know, if an actor sort of goes, his performance was totally bad. That's completely directed yeah. at this one person. Yeah, it's very personal, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and uh, damning. So, um, yeah, it's just like walking up to them going, "You sucked." Yeah, you know how bad you sucked. Yeah. You know you really sucked. You sucked so bad. You wanted me to leave and go to some other place that sucked slightly less. <laughs> you wanted me to leave. <laughs> wait. <laughs> yeah, you wanted me. To... <laughs> no wait. <laughs> you sucked so bad. I I wanted to leave. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> right. You made me want you to want me to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Right, Zach, did you want to say anything else about Shogun from last week when we ran out of time? It was so long ago. <laughs> I'm not sure. Not not really, I guess. I might have... Let me think. No, I, I think if I can't think of anything immediate, then we should just leave it and move on. Okay. Top tip! <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Rob, do you want to talk about Red Dead before, and we'll get Portal in later? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I will finish off. This will be probably the last you'll hear from me talking about Dead, Dead, we're Dead, Dead. Hey. Um, really? This time? Yeah, well, I finished it. Yeah. I, I played it to the end. Dan was watching me. It was uh, 
<laughs> was, oh, well, I sort of made the effort the first thing this morning. I thought, oh, I better actually start getting towards the end of this. And then my, oh, I've only got a few missions left, quickly turned into, actually, there's still quite a fucking lot yeah. left to do. It's quite nice. Uh... It's, uh... I'll be honest with you. Like, I think the, the, the ending ha- was ruined for me. You know, I knew what was going to happen, kind of. You know, it was, Because it, of the spiders. The, well, the internet, uh, e- yeah. even through things that were trying not to spoil it, you kind of end up knowing what's happened. I know, yeah. But even with that in mind, a bit of me sort of didn't think it was done that well, really. You know, there's sort of like the climax just sort of happens. Yeah. You know, and, and you end up just thinking, well, what was the point in all that? <laughs> kind of. But maybe that was what they were That's going That's kind for. of it. What was the point? Yeah. yeah. Well, what was the point in this entire game? Like, have, have I just wasted, you know, not, not in the sense that I, I've... If you're getting, like, attached to the story of a game, to suddenly sort of go, yep, all of that didn't make any difference. <laughs> but I think the, the clue is in the title. Redemption, that's what it's about. And he does redeem himself, even if you can't ever, you know, get away from mm. what you've done. You know, you know, the past always catches up with you, but at least you can make something of yourself, you know. And I don't know. It, it's an interesting... Because it's, it's not conventional at all, is it? I mean... No, I don't I guess know. Not, I but... can't think of any other game that would just do that. I mean, it's like in a weird way, Red Dead is just in in terms of the story, kind of completely unlikable. You, in the entire sort of storyline of it, there's so little to actually sort of get behind, if you know what I mean. Other than your own character, yeah, there's really very little to sort of get. Um, kind of like you know, you know, think oh he they, he's awesome or he's awesome because everyone is an ass. Well, uh, pretty much everyone in that game that is, is true. a bastard. But if you think and about, it's just like, um, damn it, say um, the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's like watching frustration comedy for me. Actually, you sort of end up, you know, when when things keep going from bad to worse, and it's not the protagonist's fault, and he can't really help it, and it's like and you're just sitting there cringing more yeah. than you're laughing. This storyline's like that in the sense that every time you do something good, something else comes up that's much worse, and it just yeah. keeps going and keeps going. And they're like, ah! But it does seem to happen in westerns. I noticed, like the spaghetti westerns, for example. Like the good, even the good in the good and the bad and the ugly isn't that good, really, mm. and terrible things happen like his you know him meeting his the ugly meeting his brother and stuff and, and things anyway, anyway uh, I do yeah. still want to watch Spaghetti Westerns because that's one of the things that kind of missed past my movie watching eyes by yeah they're very good I mean I, I think that Red Dead has got some quite strong morals in it in some ways although it does suffer slightly from the Grand Theft Auto oh he He's a good guy, but he's, like, killed about 50,000 people. He's still, he's still killing a load of dudes. <laughs> yeah, but, you know. Pretty, but it kind of, the context of the game makes, sort of makes that less harsh. Less, yeah, it makes much more sense. Yeah, it's not like Nico Bellic. Like, hey, he's a good guy, shoot some civilians for me, brother. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. It's an outlaw, you know, wild, it's the Wild West, no one, literally the Wild West. Yeah. You know, in New York City, if you would, if you had killed, you know, t- you know, hundreds of people... No matter what it was for, you would be famous. Yeah. You would be caught. It would happen. Whereas here, it doesn't. I have to say, uh, uh, well, uh, while I didn't have any, and I still have to say, and I'm I'm pretty glad we didn't give it game of the year. Now that yeah. I played it, because okay. it isn't the overall experience. I don't think is it's it, it's good. But it's it, it definitely can't topple Mass Effect in terms of the overall consistency and overall feel. Right, you know, okay. bits of jank and sort of inconsistent difficulty curve is kind of the the biggest downers in a way. As I say, the jank can be quite irking at some point. And that fucking knife two cougars mission. <laughs> yeah. Fucking knifing a cougar is hard at the best of times. You have to hit it like three or four times with your knife. Yeah. And then no, that one time I finally got one this morning. And then the sec and then and then like just as soon as I killed it, two more basically maul me to death in that imme- in that immediate instance. It's like I've been searching for cougars for fucking ages and then like buses, three of them have turned up at the same yeah, time and I can't time. handle it. And it has it does have that tendency, doesn't it, with the wildlife, where things just sort of like suddenly appear and sort of in in groups and sort of just yeah, like you kill a grizzly and then in the process of you skinning it, two more have appeared yeah. nearby and and I'm, and I 
start hunting you down. They're angry. It's like, yeah. Bastards! Yeah. And then, and, then, and then that happens with cougars, which are even more evil than bears, really. And uh, They're a lot faster, that's for yeah. sure. As, as I say, all oh, that one that happened this morning where I shot a... <laughs> it's probably kind of realistic in a way, but for quite irritating because it doesn't really happen in the game mechanics. Um, is that, you know, I shot a cougar. It started running away from me, which I thought, that's kind of appreciative. It's a, like, man with gun, sees me as a threat. I'll just chase it with my knife now in a comedy fashion. Uh, and then just promptly dies in front of me. And it's like, damn it, I needed to knife you! <laughs> that's the most annoying challenge in the game so far, I think. It's just... And I still get caught out by the odd occasional um, event. Uh, one of those happened this morning before you, you joined me, where it was like, event! And it was one of those... Um, um, where some sort of hold-up is already happening by the time you get there. And so you're right. just having a look at it, trying to assess who's what and who's the bad guy. Then they all turn on you in an instant. It's like, blam, dead. Oh. Great. Oh, you had no control of that scenario. Yeah. And it's uh, uh, Yeah, that does happen. And that, and when it's, it's things like that that just kind of jerk you out. And, the, uh, and I still don't think they needed to put the mountains in because it's such a harsh change in the environment. Yeah. Like, you go from, like, within a matter of feet... From what looks like relatively hot, sort of dusty, but kind of green mountain area, plains, yeah. to very to suddenly incredibly snowy. <laughs> they basically squeezed that into the top of the map there. Yeah, um, it doesn't work. I yeah. think it would have been better without it. Yeah, possibly. Um, yeah, I mean, it just doesn't. It doesn't really necessarily it fit. It, the well, whole... no, it, in the, the fact that it's in the mountains and the fact <coughs> that it's snowy doesn't add to anything, really. No. I mean, that's why they put it right at the end. I mean, actually, there is... You wouldn't think so, but there is snow in Westerns. I mean, did you see True uh, Grit, the latest? Um... No, I wanted to, but didn't get to see it in time. Uh, and uh, the classic, The Searchers, um, has snow. It, because for the same reason, because in the, if you go the west enough, yeah. there's the mountains. Yeah, yeah but given, it's just given the squeezed yeah. feel of the game, it's not right. I think it's... someone must have thought, oh, uh, we should do this because it's in these westerns. And then someone thought, oh, hang on, we can put grizzly bears and we can do X, Y, Z. And then... They could still have had grizzlies. Yeah. You know, it could have been just like the green bit of uh, tall trees I don't have a problem with. It, right. doesn't, it doesn't feel quite so out of place, but it's the sudden transition from that to, to the mountain. Right. To mountain is yeah. a bit crap. It is a bit odd. Um, yeah, I think uh, I take your point there. But yeah, as I say, the ending just felt that little bit anticlimactic, and that's... Probably because I knew where it was coming, and it just sort of kind of happens. It does. And, and, and well, because it's kind it of a surprise. And as I said, it's uh, meant to be anyway. And the way Marston handles it feels kind of. I think he's resigned to his fate. Yeah, and uh, I know what you mean, but it's like you've been—he's been a badass all these other times, and he's been fighting for a very long time, and nothing, not one thing, has stopped him on the way. And then this. What is a relatively small group of guys compared to the guys you've just fought off. That's true, I suppose. Um, he just goes, ah, fuck it. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it doesn't feel right. Yeah. It seems a bit weird. Don't get me wrong, still great. But yeah. it's it sort of like... It's not slight, perfect. No, slightly unbelievable at that stage of the yeah. game. And it's bleh. <laughs> but it is interesting, I think. It is Especially interesting. the... Yeah. I think the lead up to it, I think, is... Uh, all those missions with your family that are a lot easier at the end. I, I really like that. You know, it really did sort of, you know, it could easily have been, uh, you know, all the fighting and then the end boss could have been Dutch or whatever. They could have put more content in before that, but that could have been a game. Yeah, and that would I be mean, the standard way. Given what happened, you know, that you get a song and there's a sort of like one of these moments yeah. after that mission, which is ruined by herbs, the... Um... <laughs> Um, yeah, they could have quite easily have left the game there with the joyous reunion and stuff, and I'm glad they didn't. They didn't, yeah, exactly. I'm Although glad. it is really confusing for a bit, isn't it? Yeah. Because right? all of a sudden you get some missions that are like the start of the game, yeah. and you're like, what's going on here? Is there, how, how, how much more is there left? Yeah, exactly. Uh... Yeah, I think it's interesting. But yeah. It, I keep, could... it does keep you guessing for a bit. Yeah. So then. But yeah, down the internet. Don't watch the reviews. If I'm, I'll actually be completely honest with you. Do not watch the reviews because it gives away not just... It, it, all it took for me to know when and where it was going to happen was the setting of, you know, they didn't show anything on the reviews mm. I watched or anything, but they showed, they showed you where it happened. And it's like, it's, as soon as you know that, 
Yes. Um, or as soon as you recognise that part of the, the level, it's no longer a surprise. So if, I, you, if, if you're interested and want to play, I recommend learning as little as possible and basically disregard this podcast. <laughs> I think these big... <coughs> this is a long time since it came out now. And I think yeah. these big story-based games, the big ones, if you're interested in them, I think it really is beneficial playing them when they come out. I mean, we're going to move on to Portal later, but I mean... I'm, uh, I think if I hadn't played Mass Effect 2 when it came out, and I think by now I would heard, have heard quite a lot about the end boss and, and just mm. things in general that would have been detrimental to my experience. And I I'm, suppose when, we, when you think about it, we're, yeah, we, we've talked about like the Terminator in Mass Effect 2 is essentially the end boss, isn't it? Yeah. So we, we were pretty quick to start talking about that because it's ridiculous. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I think it really helps if you if you have the time, obviously. But mm. um, I'm definitely going to play L.A. Noire as soon as it comes out, you know, uh, uh, so that I won't have any of these tr- problems because I'm sure there'll be lots of twists in that um, in a sort of uh, L.A. Confidential style. Yeah. And it does kind of bring out my hoarder instinct, Red, there, just because for some reason, even though I know a bit of my head knows all the side parts... Are quite tedious and yeah. quite not always boring. I can't tear myself away from them. Mm. It's, that's strange. Yeah. It's like I'm sort of enjoying them as much as I'm hating them. <laughs> it's, it's... I sometimes do those side stuff because I love the central game so much that I want to show that through. Like through, oh, I, oh, I see what you mean. See what yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, I want to show that I I love this game. So I will collect all the feathers, just not because I like collecting feathers in Assassin's Creed, but because I like Ezio, etc. And I think <laughs> yeah. it's a cool game. And yeah, but I'm I don't. Like, know. Hey, Mr. Developer, we like it so much. I've got all the achievements. Do some more flowers. Yes, more flowers. <laughs> and and they oblige. But yeah, dead, 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 dead. Definitely good. A good game. Stamp of approval. Excellent. Considerably better than GTA in my eyes. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for a new GTA. Anyway. I can. <laughs> uh, what else have you been playing, man? Uh, what else have I been handling this way? Went back to Sonic 4 for a bit to get the Chaos Emeralds. Turned into Super Sonic. Turned into Super Sonic, which I did in front of all of you guys. It's and, really, uh, really bad. It basically, I think that justifies our nomination for worst music. <laughs> did, did we give it to Sonic 4 in the end? I can't remember. I can't remember. Um... No, oh no, we gave it to GT5 menu music. Oh yeah, we did. Um, but it's yeah, the, that was the, the clear winner. <laughs> yeah, the supersonic music is just as bad. It's probably quite. It's just, as 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 uh, my brother put it, it's a random collection of notes. <laughs> it's it's god awful, and uh, yeah, but I'm glad I pressed a bit of it. You know, the sort of, I didn't think there was going to be that much life to it when I first sort of played through it. I sort of bit me thought, well, I don't really see myself coming back to this just to do all the time trials and just to get all the emeralds and stuff. But I'm glad I did because actually the the special stage structure is kind of uh, some some of the special stages are quite well thought, are quite ingenious actually in their sort of trickery. Like the one way, um, they have a few one way walls that become solid after you pass through them, and then trap you into a bit of the level that then takes longer for you to get through, meaning that you're pressed for time to get through it and All things right. like that. And it, unless you're a kind of a genius and avoid them before you get there and things like that. So the, the actual special stages became interesting. And there's an achievement for doing the first special stage within the time limit, collecting every single ring on the level, oh, which is was tough, but actually somehow quite fun to keep trying. <laughs> and uh, because you don't know there aren't many of those instant exit things, and there's a kind of a little bit of a cheat where if you use retry from this pause menu whilst in the, the special stage, it doesn't dump you back to the level you were playing. You can actually just do the special stage again. Oh, that's cool. Rather than having to go through the level, get 50 rings, enter the special stage, have your one shot at it. And then get out. If you if you're if you don't if you use retry before the time runs out or before um, you get kicked because you hit one of those exit things, exit balls, mm. balls of exiting in the special stage, <laughs> then you'll uh, then you can just do the special stage again, which is nice. The backgrounds to those are so psychedelic and hypnotic. Not <laughs> you do get fucking dizzy. I, I, yeah. It did take me quite a while to do that achievement, but it's and you do get quite fucking dizzy by the end of it. Yeah. yeah, the whole world spinning around at quite speed, and the psychedelic background isn't moving, and Sonic's spinning in his curled up ball in yeah. as well within it. So much spinning. <laughs> yeah, everything's spinning. The uh, it, it's sort of like contagious spinning effect occurs in your brain. 
That's, yeah. So I've applied a bit of that. Cool. Uh, maxed out all the achievements on Pac-Man, which is totally sweet. But I kind of a bit. I know it was always going to be a fairly shallow affair. Yeah. And um, at the four hundred point margin, I got it for. Can't complain still. Right. Um, but a bit of me kind of thinks I wish they did a little, just a little bit more of the mechanic, like some variation in the game mode. Like even if they just introduced classic Pac-Man mode into the series, you know, rather than trying to. Because it's currently entirely based on the time trial system, and it's entirely based on the uh, well, the time limited system, and entirely based on the fact that the game speed goes up as you play, and the crazy oh. ghost mechanics with the blah, 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 yeah, and yeah, the, and all the and the power ups and things. I kind of liked it to just have had you know the other Pac Man variants in there as well. Yeah, a complete package. Yeah, like you know, you, you could have just gone back to Pac Man Normal, where the uh, maybe the grid doesn't change or. Uh, the map could still change, but you know they don't end up with the ludicrous amounts of ghosts, or perhaps the ghosts don't tail you like they do. Mm. Um, so they all, so their movement is always fairly randomised, like it used to be. You know, mm. it's just a bit of an oversight. But I, I know what Namco is trying to do. They're trying to make you buy, if you want the original style of gameplay, buy the original. Yeah, and it's which is still buy available on Xblar, and it's like right. you bastards. Yeah. If you're, you're trying to make like a, a best of the best kind of edition, maybe, and it's like you've, you've just made, you seem to have forgotten the rest of it. It's like barely for money. Well, they could put it. It would have been so easy if they had championship edition style and original style and multiplayer like this arcade. Before. Oh, imagine that as a as a package. That's like an expensive X bar or even a box game. Oh, I bet me still wishes they still did the. Um... I forget what it was called. Do you, do you remember the, uh, the, the what? Because we've been playing Crystal Chronicles recently, and it's, 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 it's easy to remember. Do you remember the the GameCube uh, and GBA enabled Pac Man versus? Vaguely, I, I, it was one of those games I always wanted to play, but it was only available through some other game or something. Like you had to buy Ridge Racers, I think it was called, or something like a <laughs> yeah. where the, where they tried to take Ridge Racer in a sort of semi realistic direction. And and um, t- churned out a crap game, but it came with Pac Man versus, and uh, which the concept sounds great because Pac Man's got the um, um, got 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 the entire map on his. Um, uh, no, I can't remember which way round it works. Is it one of them? I think Pac Man plays on the GBA, so his view of the world is on there, and the the, the ghosts get the main screen. Uh, and the ghosts have to coordinate together to sort of figure out where Pac-Man is oh, that's kind of... and hunt him down. Um, so the go- I think the ghosts can see the entire map, um, but Pac-Man obviously can only see- on his screen can only see Pac-Man and nearby ghosts. And it's uh, so you've got to try and <laughs> hunt him down like a bastard. And then as soon as someone gets him, they become Pac-Man. Oh. So, <laughs> so then they're on their GBA looking at what's going on, and it becomes like a. An interesting collaborative and competitive multiplayer experience, and it's like always wanted to try that. That sounds awesome. It does sound very cool, <laughs> but impossible to see what you're doing because of GBAs. Because <laughs> you can't see the screens. Yep, ever. Yeah, they are a bit poop, but you know, if you had SP, you should be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Do it on the Wii with a bunch of DSs. Yeah, except they can't. Why can't that work? Well, they could have done. They've just never done it. That's what I'm wondering. It's like when. We always yeah, want, we, we wondered as, well, right? we wondered as soon as they made the DS whether they'd do another Crystal Chronicles, but use the Wii and the Wi-Fi connection to get them all to link up. Yeah. Um, and there's no reason why they couldn't have done it, except they went down, Square went down the route of doing it DS only, and having ad hoc Wi-Fi is the way yeah. to play it. I don't know. I always liked the idea of having a big... Ma- it's, it's, it's like when you go to an arcade and they used to have those machines where they had the everyone had their individual one, but then they had a big centre screen or something that showed like the game as a whole. Like, do you remember that shitty um, motorbike game that seemed to be everywhere? It was like a... This was back in the day when the graphics were practically Mode 7 style. Um, it was like a Japanese race circuit or something. I forget what it was called. But it was a, it was a motorbiking game with the full setup and things. But they had like... Um, but the the big setups of those had like a, a giant sort of like combined game screen that would give you like race highlights and stuff and the stats of people All racing right. and show the positions and stuff and attempts to provide like a uh, uh, a view for bystanders to watch. 
Cool. And it's like, oh, I always liked that concept. You know, there's something about the everyone has their own, and then there's a central thing that's kind of appealing. Definitely, yeah. Well, we'll see what happens with this ridiculous Wii 2 rumour. Oh, God. Whereby yeah. every controller has a um, touchscreen, which, according to the rumour I've seen, is 6.2 inches wide, which is bigger than a Kindle screen. It's freaking huge. It just doesn't sound right. It doesn't sound right at all. But can you imagine Crystal Chronicles on that, baby? Mm. Did didn't need that much of a screen though. No, but <laughs> it was only a menu. Or the Pac-Man game, that'd be great. And why you need it to be touchscreen, I don't know. No, well, I can see what they're trying to do. The touchscreen does offer. I wonder. If... They, they've had, you know, no. their, their DS experience obviously means that they want to carry Two on. Screens. They want to carry on with the whole touch thing. Well, it's kind of but... merging the idea of DS and Wii, isn't it? Because then you've yeah. got a Wii. You've got two screens like a DS, haven't you? The top screen would be the television in this case, and the mm. top screen would be on your controller. Yeah. Um, but then, how is the motion did, controller? Did you say it had a funny code name or something? Oh, Project Cafe or something. <laughs> Which is totally shit. Yeah. <laughs> they could have had, like, you know, Nintendo have always been. Dolphin. Re- yeah. Revolution and Dolphin were actually kind of cool project yeah. names. But They're better than cafe. the names for the actual consoles. That's that's their problem. Yeah, cafe though, or maybe that's exactly why they yeah. called it cafe. It's, it's like, like right, let's come up with a shit code word. <laughs> yeah. So when we come out with the actual name, people won't be so pissed off of us. I've actually forgotten what Connect used to be. What was it? Natal. Natal. Project Natal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, that was weird. Yeah. Then again, yeah. Neither name was good actually in that case. Like, I kind of connect is kind of clever, but it just sounds a bit too much like connect. <laughs> Which I suppose is a good follow on to what I'm talking about next. Yeah. I've been playing connect games. Hey. Woo. Um, I, I didn't buy a connect. Sorry, Microsoft. I've got one on loan. Um, and that's probably a good thing because I do get the feeling while connect is an awesome bit of tech, I feel like it will fall into the same hole as all motion control has done, in that it wears off. Yeah. You know, it is it's it is cool, and I see a bigger future for the Kinect-style technology than I do any other kind of motion control that's come up. I do, I agree. Um, but, unless some, someone does something really innovative and a game you can really get behind, it's turning into mini-game collection with limited possibilities again. And it's like, I sincerely hope that doesn't cause it to be dropped, because it is great. I I think that Dance Central is the best game I've ever played not using a conventional controller, I think. Unless you count gun light gun games or something that's not unconventional steering. Oh, I guess not. Yeah. But I mean motion controls. Yeah, given... Yeah, okay, let's put it in the category of this generation of motion control based. I suppose. Um, you know, we'll put that against... If we put it against Wii and Move... Yeah then just the sheer level of detection it must be doing on Dance Central is impressive. I mean, Mario Galaxy is probably a better game, but it's not really a motion control game, is it? No. So you can't really count that, even if it does use Wii. Well, I don't know. Things like Wii Sports and like uh, Excite Truck, I guess, are kind of motion control games. Yeah. They don't need to be, but they were. They are, yeah. Um, uh, and that was kind of the point. And the, you know, the move has its equivalents as well that definitely benefit from it being move. And things like that. And the move does have the accuracy and the potential to bring back light gun games. Um, so, you know, the, I, I'm holding out hope for that. I, I'm still holding out hope for move, although Sony have been very, very weak on its support uh, since its launch. You know, what else has, what has come out with move support other than Killzone 3? I don't know. I'm still waiting for that sorcery thing to come out that was at E3 last year. That looked kind of cool, sort of. Yeah. Well, I don't know what it's called. No, I don't know what it's called either, but. I remember it looking kind of cool. It's like, I'm, I'm pretty glad I didn't... I was very tempted by Move when it turned up, just because I was impressed with the accuracy of it. Well, it's, you just compare it to the Wii. Yeah, when you, when, you put, when you put the two side by side. Even yeah, the, Motion Plus. Is, yeah, yeah, the Move is so accurate and so precise. It's fantastic in terms of, you know, someone trying to mimic the Wii and do a better job. Hands up, you've done a good job, Sony. Now support it. Actually produce some decent stuff that people want to play on it. You know, mm. which you typically haven't done you know they do this every time great hardware no support mm. you suck well the trouble is you know who's, how, who's going to develop a game for the move when they haven't got the install base of the Wii it's just so vastly bigger that is true but you know kind of in house 
They, they, well, that's the that's the that's thing, the thing Ninty gets. Saying, well, that's the it? thing Ninty gets right, isn't it? They they come out with a strong lineup of games pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, with the possible exception of 3DS, um, it's not that strong, really. Yeah, when uh, it comes out, it'd be different though. Yeah. You? Um, Sony haven't done that with Move. Heavy Rain was probably the biggest hitter for Move support because um, that seems very appropriate. I guess, but it's kind of niche though compared to Wii Sports. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> well, yeah. Heavy Rain. But they're, you know, sports champions as well. Yeah, you yeah. I mean? he- heavy Rain is probably the most, you know, the patch for Heavy Rain is probably the biggest, most yeah. high-profile game that's had it. But I, I don't really think Killzone 3 has been particularly high-profile. Well, no matter how good the motion control in Heavy Rain is, it's still probably perceived as being tacked on purely because it's a patch. Yeah. So. I guess. But there's no other game that would, well, you know, it's incredibly appropriate for Heavy Rain. It's yeah. Like it's, the entire game is basically waggle cutscenes. It? <laughs> it's just like, um, it wouldn't, it, that would be a very, very good use. You know, imagine doing the cut your finger off scene with a move controller. <laughs> but anyway, Kinect, fantastic tech. Um, a couple of things they need to do. Um, I would be, although they've implemented some nice ideas like the face ID, to sign in doesn't work that great mm. it's a bit flaky um, it's great when only me was signed into the system because it would detect me or not me quite well yeah. but now that I've added what we've got three or four IDs on the system now it seems to get easily confused you yeah. can pick up my brother quite easily and I think that's because we ID'd him with his super thick glasses on oh, so okay. it can easily detect that he's wearing his super thick glasses I've not seen anyone wearing super thick glasses not, not glasses as in sort of like bottle cap glasses and thick rimmed. He's not blind. Um, it's, <laughs> um, so the sort of, it seems to work well for him. It gets, it got you and Naomi confused. Yeah, it does. Which is a bit bad, to be honest. You're not even, you're not even remotely the same body shape. It's, <laughs> it's, it, that shouldn't have gone wrong at all. Um, uh, but it's a neat concept. And so if they improve that, if they give it well, slightly more... Does it look more... at the body shape, or does it purely focus on the face when it's I think it's both. I think it's both face and body oh, shape. Cool. But okay. Otherwise, why would it make you do all those poses? That's true, yeah. Um, and it's... Um, yeah, so that's a bit of a... You know, that could that could do with some improvement. Neat idea, please continue making it awesome. Um, the guide needs a bit of work, in the sense that they the, the, the voice control is excellent. You know, it picks you up pretty damn clearly. It does pretty much what you say. It just needs more commands. Yeah, there's barely more... any. There's barely nothing. The Connect Hub is really restrictive. I'd I'd want to be able to get to my games library or my video library properly and be able to move through it entirely through my voice. I mean, my iPhone, I can say any name in my contacts, and it's fairly good at picking up which person I'm talking about. And all I've en- all it's doing is text, right? Comparing yeah. what you're saying to text. I mean, if you could add that to the connect so that even if it didn't work 100% of the time it'd still be good because then you could say play Red Dead Redemption it would might be able to pick that up you know yeah, yeah. or the games the names of your games in your games library that'd be a lot quicker than navigating to the menu if you said play Pac-Man Championship Edition yeah DX or whatever and it played it that would be so cool god damn it absolutely I mean I still see that if if the tech gets great and Xbox does start putting in features like Netflix and things like that um Stuff like that, just being able to... If it was just my television, for instance, to, uh, I love be, the concept of just being able to, say, change the channel uh, you know, to it and it to do that. Yeah. Um, which is why I was a bit disappointed that it didn't have full music control available through the Xbox. I'd love to be able to go to my music library and say, and, and then be able to select to stream off my PC and just say, go. Hmm. And it play it, and then if I didn't like it, shout Xbox Next at it, and it pick it up. Which it can do with Last FM. Um, you can shout Xbox Next and it will move on to the next track. But I want that from my music, not just from Last FM, and not just from the Zune player, which obviously only has access to the Zune library. And yeah. it's like they've missed a lot of tricks, and a lot of tricks that seemingly, you know, they just shout at me as being, "Why the fuck didn't you do that?" It's and worse than that, this first update doesn't seem to address any of that. They're adding Hulu and Netflix support to connect, but we don't get that in Europe. So, fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> you need to be able to put a sound theme on it as well so you could load in the Star Trek sound so that when you say computer it goes doo 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 
and, <laughs> you, and then you say whatever it is, and then it goes, do, 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 and it actually does it. <laughs> or read it back, or read back yeah. what it thinks you've said. I mean, it does come up on screen of what it thinks you've said. Yeah. Because um, that's what the iPhone does, is read back everything that you've said. You've asked it to do, yeah. yeah. Including calling Zachary. Calling yeah. Zachary bird jazz. Or, yeah, it gets some names. A bird bit, jazz. But that's okay. I don't mind. <laughs> it's just that it always, even when it gets the name wrong when it pronounces back, it's still got the command, right? So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not like I had to say bird, bird the, jazz. Name, the name wrong in order to get it to recognise it, because it was fine with it. Yeah. Yeah. It's... Yeah, it's definitely good. There's a tiny bit of lag as well on its input, but I suppose that's to be expected. Yeah. Um, menus would be a lot easier if it had definition of hand, in the sense of not just being able to figure out where your hand is, but what shape you're making with your hand. Yeah. That would make menus... I'd love to be able to point specifically to select an item. Yeah. Because the hover of your hand thing is okay to sort of move around a menu, but then when you actually want to uh, select something, it'd be nice to just be able to point at it so you don't have to hover and wait. Yeah, what you that, be, that, that can get tedious. What you should be able to do with the hand thing is hover and then crush. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah that crush the menu system. option. I have to say, I have to give credit to Dance Central for having possibly the best implementation of a motion-based menu. Yeah, because it doesn't involve any hovering. It's great. You hover to select, slap to okay it. Yeah, the slap good. is great, and it feels so satisfying as well because you're just like fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> And you keep doing that. Ooh, oh yeah, yeah. And Nick, Nick, Nick can do that almost select effect, which yeah. makes an awesome noise of it going. But yeah, if you have Connect, you should get Dance Central. Yeah. It is by far and away the best implementation we've seen. Top tip. I agree. <laughs> I agree. Dance Central good, uh, and it's fucking knackering. Yeah, I think that would get you fit if you did if you did one song every day. On, I don't know, That's maybe. a few extra calories each day. Yeah, exactly. And you get to do Crank That by Soldier Boy. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you! <laughs> do that Superman, I hope! Yeah, like, and there's a Superman move, isn't crank it? Crank That Soldier Boy! <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. It, it's funny. <laughs> Be playing anything else? Uh, well. Red Dead Connect? I'm trying to think actually, what else have we been doing? Other than Portal 2. We talked about know. Crystal Chronicles. Because we keep saying we were. Yeah, we haven't really talked about it ever. But we, don't, we haven't really played it in the last two weeks. So no. it's gone a bit stale in our minds. Um, yeah, we'll go back to play Crystal Chronicles. It's still kind of cool. And we're still kind of not any further than we've ever got before again. Well, no, we're not anywhere near where as far as we've got before yet. Well, I don't know. I got a lot further than well, you Well, no, guys, I meant but... you did, but yeah. as a team... I don't think we uh, ever got any further than the, that watery level. No, that's true. But we did do a couple of years of grinding. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And so, uh, um, the music in that game is quite nice. Relaxing. Yeah, it, 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 the problem. The only problem I have with the music in Crystal Chronicles is the loops are quite short. Yeah, it's like it's well done, and actually for I don't know how they done it. Maybe it was just a recording, or maybe it's some of that awesome procedure, you know, sort of like uh, tracker style music where they've used an instrument with a note, you know, like the old fa- Final MIDI Fantasy controlled or... MIDI esque, yeah, yeah, sort of, um, probably sort of music. And if it, if it is that, done really well, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So and they've kept. It's, I like the consistent feel throughout the game. There's no sort of completely out of place elements. Uh, the only thing I would say is they've fallen into the classic. Um, well, it's a bit than uh, I say classic. It's not really Square's fault. It's the kind of the Nintendo hole of having slow menus. Like mm-hmm. you have to wait for the pan of the map with, to rotate around to the next area, which goes, <sighs> and then you're there. And that once you've figured, you know, the first couple of times you walk through a miasma stream. Um, which is basically a dungeon in a straight line that it forces you to physically walk through rather than just saying you've got through it, is a nice graphical effect, but nothing more, and can get a bit tedious after a while. Um, you know, the Miasma streams have a point in the game. They're supposed to block where you can go based on the levels available to you, so certain routes and certain years are blocked off unless you take a certain action or things like that. Um, that's, that's why they're all like that, but the game still makes you physically walk through them rather than saying you got through, which right. is just a pad of time in the end, which is a bit annoying. But there's a pretty effect, so, <laughs> so it sort of mitigates that. <laughs> but, you know, it's great, actually, because, as I was saying earlier, the whole central screen thing is cool, and given its complexity, um, 
and I don't mean she's not here, but I don't, and I don't mean this to sound too derogatory. Um, but Naomi's getting it. You know, she's hot. she's not great with the controls, but she's not floundering either. Apart from sometimes in the bosses where it's like she goes down and then she doesn't realise that we've read her, and then she goes down again and then she gets increasingly frustrated. Well, it's a by bit... not knowing whether she's alive or dead and can move or not or well, it's a bit, yeah the dead the, the death thing is handled a bit weirdly isn't it because you you turn into that ghost form when you're dead and you can still move about and it's and during the hectic boss fight sometimes that can be a bit difficult to see I guess yeah so that's that's I I don't really blame her for that that that's kind of just a sort of visual fault I think because those boss fights are a bit hectic. Some of the bosses are just that little bit too large really, aren't they? Because they take up an enormous amount of screen. Their their effects are cause of the thing. And of course you've got to be staying all of this within the tiny area around the chalice. So they become a bit clusterfuck yeah. <laughs> by design. <laughs> and it's uh, um, I, can, I can see why she struggles. I find it quite hard in a lot of games to tell when I've been res sometimes. Not in first person like Battlefield where you get up and it's obvious. Uh, yeah. But in like uh, Castle Crashes sometimes I can't... I can tell someone is trying to res me and then it, uh, there doesn't seem to be any big effect. For the... <laughs> well, especially not in Castle Crashes. Yeah. It's like once you've done the video game it's just like ding it and then you, you both just move away. You just move, yeah. And yeah. it's like sometimes what? S- yeah. Scott Pilgrim does the same thing. Yeah. And uh, um, although it makes it a little bit more obvious because your sprites are huge. Um, <laughs> so, so, and there's an enormous um, uh, you've got that enormous countdown clock over your dead body in, in, in um, although but then that as soon as they start trying to res you yeah but that should and there's that sort of like get up sound there's a sort of dweet, dweet, dweet. <laughs> so you should be paying attention to that I guess oh, yeah. but uh, so it's not quite so bad I'm just trying to think well there, there is kind of a big deal isn't there in Crystal Chronicles when you get resed because you get that sort of like shaft of light from the sky and, uh, yeah, but that's and just a specific the sound effect and, like, oh what so you get the shaft anyway yeah if you miss oh yeah that's a bit yeah. <laughs> oh yeah so, so you might not actually get resed because you could w- quite easily walk out of where someone <laughs> yeah, is yeah that's the worst thing it's um, like if you're dead mean. and you're still moving around it makes it quite difficult to res for you <laughs> yeah you can walk out of the spell. It that happens quite a lot actually. <laughs> if someone's like, <laughs> like, cast the cure, cast the cure, and Gnome's obviously trying to run to get out of out of out of the way of danger, and then you cast the cure, and she's walked away from where you were casting it. <laughs> yes. You have to start. You have, when you have to kind of preempt people's movements. Yeah, you have to put it in front of them so they run into them as well, casually. And they do sort of have a hang around effect, don't they? So they last quite a while. Yeah. Actually, no. The, thinking about it, the bit Gnome was most getting annoyed about, and I can sort of again, I can see her frustration with this, is on that sort of like buggered town level. Yeah. Um, where those 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 vine gates oh, right, that yeah. you have to flame open. Not not just because of the flaming action, but because their animation for closing um, sort of stops you getting through before the animation is really started. They have this sort of wobble, of wobble before they close, so they sort of move a little bit. But as soon as they start doing that move a little bit, you can't walk through, even though there's a big open gap there. Um, so you're like, get through, get through! Why the fuck can't I get through? And it's like... Uh, Quite irritating. And the hole you have to run through is really tiny. Yeah, the hole through touch, you can only really go single file, so you can probably only get two of your dudes through at once, unless you combine the fire spell, yeah. and if you, which takes a bit of co- coordination between a couple of you. If you combine your fire spells to get Fira or Firaga, then the thing stays open for, like, ever. So you just have to be a bit, plan it out a bit. <laughs> but that was quite the problem we were getting attacked by enemies as well. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. Then, then we got attacked by enemies with one of us on the wrong side of the bloody gate, or with the chalice on the wrong side. Yeah. The one person who has the chalice on the side where the enemies aren't, so he can't move the area further far enough to get the enemies in range. <laughs> yeah, it has its flaws, but it's not so bad, really. We're playing it with three. I cannot but think it would be even better with four. <laughs> well, yeah. I guess that's the idea. Although clusterfuck to hell, probably. <laughs> yeah. I was pretty amazed how dim those Game Boy Advance screens are, though, if you compare yeah, them to any like, modern screen. Wait, looking back at it, I don't know how we cope. How did we see anything? Well, yeah. Do they degrade with age, though? Probably. Maybe. But even so, I mean, I remember there being a big jump from the original Game Boy Advance to, like, the SP. Well, yeah, because that actually had a light. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, it was shocking. 
can't say anything. I, mean, I swear, like a game gear. I guess we did used to play them the most of the time. Hell of light, light, didn't which it? is why it used a million batteries. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, guess we did, I guess we did used to play during the day, I guess, when we hooked up to play GBA stuff. We sort of yes. do it outside <laughs> where there's m- plenty of light. <laughs> Yes. Oh, I remember playing um, the uh, Kura Kura Kura, 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 Kura with Kura, the like. Yeah. You only need of cables. Yeah, yeah, and you yeah. only need one game pack because I had it. And was I, it the cable squid? Yeah, and it would project the game into. That was a great idea. It was great, and it, that's the best game for it that I've seen. But that game was cool, and uh, obviously though the Nintendo cottoned onto that, didn't they? And started to. They did. Started to restrict games in that they couldn't send the data across and they did it with DS as well where they still do it with the DS though okay? yeah some games still do that sort of like demo share but it's like as I said it's mostly demo sharing so you get a restricted version of the game everyone has to own a cart for it to work properly and it's like really no, there's no real reason for that you could just quite easily Wi-Fi the data across yeah you know technically there's no reason it's just a money thing and it's like well, you, you could have made more games that capitalise on that Choo Choo Rocket for instance was a great example of doing it right the whole game, as small as it was, you know, so there wasn't really much to sort of restrict, I guess, could have been, could be played over that hot link, you know, yeah. and it, only one person needed the game and everyone could play. Um, the same happened for the Bomberman DS, uh, not DS, the sort of Bomberman Advance, it was probably called. One cartridge needed, four people could play, perfect. You have Bomberman, how it was meant to be played without everyone having to splurge lots of money on Bomberman. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Bomberman. It was great. Great idea. Do it more. I cur 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 in those uh, multiplayer bits. They were only like about three seconds long each. Yeah, they, yeah. It took about three, you know, not long to load between them, did it? Yeah. So it was like a, it was that just was like a scramble. Game. That was cool. I like that game. Uh, that, was, that was freaking awesome. The actually. actual single player was fun. And uh, the, the multiplayer was hilarious. It was hilarious, yeah. <laughs> uh, if they try and made the multiplayer like the single player, it would have been lame. You know, if they if it had been a race through one of those long stages, mm. but because, but because they, they were so short, yeah, it was just <laughs> awesome. That was the thing you kept trying to sort of like Jiff it out, yeah, to try yeah. Out, out hard the other players basically find the, the smallest possible margin because you could see what everyone else was doing, yeah, and it's just like, oh, I can do that too. Oh fuck, no, I can't. <laughs> yeah, crunch. <laughs> or the classic fan of like. Discovering the points in the levels where you can get through by literally just mashing yourself against the wall and then just making it to a health zone before, before you, you die. lose your last hit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like I can do this super fast by just mashing my way through. Yeah, <laughs> so cool. That was a great game, man. Kuru 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 with a K. Yeah, kuru kuru And the idea, the sort of dumb fiction, was that these very slowly rotating things were like helicopters, and somehow that slow <laughs> yeah. rotation kept them in the air. And must for some reason, they were using a... helicopters without height control. Or... Yeah, they all went at the same height. Didn't they? It must have been enough. Well, it make, uh, that actually makes sense if you think like. In order for to stay in the air, if these were helicopters that rotate this slow, that means the atmosphere on this planet is super, super dense. Thick, which yeah. then means everything is super flat, which is why they can't go up and down, because of the super denseness of their world. <laughs> oh dear. Makes perfect sense. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I think they would evolved to look as cute if they'd been in a high, <laughs> high gravity situation. Don't why not. Who knows? Mm. Anyway, yeah. I suppose we should work, get, you know, no, go back to... We didn't really talk about the other games I've been playing on Connect, did we? Really, we mentioned Dance Central and it being awesome, but we probably man. should give some Credence. some time to Connect Adventures and Connect Emuls. Connect Adventures looks nice, uh, nice it, music. I think the music does get in your head. Yeah, that's pretty good. Dun, da, it's a nice package. Dun, yeah. da, dun. Dun, 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 dun. It's quite a small mini game collection. Yeah, it is. It's it's. Well it done. is pretty much like Wii Sports in that, you know, they, they are, it is a tiny, tiny game, but it's, it, yeah, it's slick. The production is. is slick. And the jump in, jump out gameplay is well done. If the identification worked a bit better, it would be even better. Even better, but that could possibly be improved by the Connect Framework updates rather than the game actually being needed to be updated. Mm. You know, that kind of stuff, which is nice. Um, it has a lot of hilarious features, like the photo taking is pretty funny. Um, the games themselves are actually quite well designed, I think. The uh, you know the, with with the possible exception of the space one, that is definitely the lamest of the collection, where you have to like fly by flapping your arms to right. to pop bubbles with your face, basically. And it's a 
it's a bit shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's because it's quite easy just to be totally awesome at it and uh, um, just you know get the the platinum medals for those levels quite easily. I see. There's mm-hmm. there's the and it's 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 not really that great, but mm-hmm. yeah, Connect Adventures a pretty good package in, but don't expect to get much time out of it. Does that come with Connect anyway? It comes with Connect. Oh, so well, anyone who has a Connect, you'll get it. Well, there you go. Then. Whether you like it or not. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, yeah, but it's a good it's a good example of the, the tech. It's a good example of how you can use full body motion control in a mini game environment, yeah. know, as opposed to just a bit of your body mm. for some of the control, um, like how connect- Connectimals does it. That doesn't really have full body at one time control. It tends to rely on a certain way of interacting, like you use your arms at one point to throw stuff. Um, which is alright actually the throwing is quite cool we had we have had difficulties with it when we first used it but the trick is to not be too aggressive mm. if you're too aggressive with it it fails to track the motion properly um, so if you're smooth with your actions you can pretty much do it and um, it te- it's quite good at detecting elevation so it considers the throw when you stop moving your arm so the higher you lift your arm for up, through the throw the higher the shot goes mm. uh, and things like that so it's just it's not completely obvious. You have to kind of figure it out for yourself, the quirks. Because obviously if it can't track your hand, it can't track where you're letting go of something. So you can't just follow through. You have to stop your throw in its tracks for it to figure out how high you intended it. So if you want to do a little throw, you have to sort of like punt it on your hip or something and it will do a little low throw. And it's uh, it's a bit funny. But it does have some kicking mechanics and, you, and some disc throwing mechanics. And the cats are so cute! <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not impressed with the cats. I think they're graphically really well yeah, done. Yeah, no, they're and good. The animation is slick. No, that I'm not. I'm not uh, saying that. I'm just disappointed there isn't more sort of maybe black and white style, but sort of Nintendo style behavioural stuff you can do with the pets. I've just you know noticed my I mean? toenails are really fucking long. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that voice. Cheers, that. Cheers, that. Cheers <laughs> that. But do you know what I mean? I think they could have done a you lot more. You're now typing Rob's toenails into the tag list. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm typing a to-do list. <laughs> to cut my nails. Cut nails. <laughs> I was painting a good picture of myself here. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> uh, what, so you mean... Yeah, the cats are pretty one-dimensional. They, yeah. all, they all act the same. They all act the... Regardless of what breed you pick, they all act the same. They don't really have any traits that you teach them particularly. They just do what you you want them to do yeah. or they'll come up with ideas of what they want to play with but they'll all handle how that toy works in the same way you know you, it, it's it's it makes it difficult to get connect they're 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 in a in an awkward sense of phrase this is probably counts as irony i guess it's hard to get connected yeah to your virtual yeah. pet that's what I thought when it was announced it would be like. I thought it would be like basically Nintendo dogs and cats or whatever. Yeah. But with but Connect, which is completely not what it is. No, uh, you basically just have to play anything, do anything with your cat for yeah. progression, for some generic progression points. Yeah. And when you get to a certain level of progression points, a new contest opens, which is a, um, a game that doesn't involve your cat <laughs> most of the time. And uh, it's basically like a little mini game for points. Um, you know, it, it, it's uh, they become a mini game collection that use one particular toy as the, uh, uh, the, the as the focus of it. Yeah, so you'll have ones for like throwing balls into monkeys' mouths or kicking balls back so they pop bubbles in the air and things like that, okay. and um, things like, and, and or driving around the circuits. There are a couple that are cat based, like the uh, the volleyball challenge is cat based but although your cat is really not involved because it can really it can return everything oh. so you don't have to have your cat in mind when you're when you're volleying the shots hmm. but that was actually one of the better ones because of the actions you had to do um, but oh, and the one that is more cat based I guess is the, the assault course where you have to do the actions you want your cat to do so if you want it to run along the course, you have to do the running action. If you want it to jump a hurdle, you have to jump. If you want it to go under a tunnel, you have to duck down. But that's kind of like Connect Adventures by proxy. Yeah. Which I yeah, I'd rather have that in Connect Adventures that that thing kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you know. So I don't know. But as you say, yeah, you're only playing for the sake of progression. You're not playing for the sake of 
imparting joy on your cat because they're always happy. Or like teaching, you can't teach your cat behaviour that. No, much. Um, well, like you, you can you, in black you, and white. It has a creatures. trick system, and it sort of makes it sound like you're teaching it tricks. But what the cat is actually doing is mimicking you based on an action you do. Mm. Um, so you could do any action you want at any time. You don't have to go any through any learning tree or anything. If as you came back the next day, you wouldn't have remembered the action or whatever. You know, it's uh, just within that. No, it doesn't that remember exercise. what it, it's not. It does. It's not that you have to go through a series of tricks in order to get to the harder tricks. You can do any trick at any time, provided you know the pose you have to pull right. for it to do. And, and then it's not like the black and white system, as you say, where once you've trained it to do something, it will do it itself. Mm. It will only do it on response to your actions when you're in trick mode. It's just another way of playing. It's like, yeah, cats have no personality. I think that's real cats shame. do. They've missed it. The, yeah, missed the... I mean, your cat, your real cat, you've taught to do the high five thing. Oh, yeah, you yeah, do yeah. That when when it game. wants food, it sort of stands up and high fives my hand, which yeah. is cool. I don't think that's really even taught that. No, it just sort of picked that up. I think, but it's it's still cool. It's still it's now used to it, and so expects me to do that every time. But that's the sort of thing that would be. I'd like that aspect of black and white, and that would be fun to do in a kind of connect game with, yeah. with an animal. Seems like a missed opportunity to me, but never mind. Maybe they'll come back. Yeah, as I say, I can't complain too much with the motion in the game. It has a few. No, it works. I'm it, it works. Has a few issues. The most annoying thing about it is the kid focus, and I know it's designed for kids, and I absolutely understand that's what they were going for. But that fucking little flying gremlin, shitty talk over everything. Yeah, fucker. I mean, Connect, Connect Adventures works fine for kids, but it doesn't annoy me as an adult. No. Whereas Connectables is quite yeah. irritating for for that because he's like he, he really does talk down to you. And when there's like a cutscene involving your cat, he just has to keep talking about what's going on. It's like, oh, be careful, Kitty. Cats don't like water. I don't. Oh, watch out, Kitty. All oh, this kind of shit is going down. <laughs> <It's> I can't <laughs> remember. Ever, that would be funny, though. I can't remember ever liking any any of that stuff when I was. You know, when I was young playing Ocarina of Time, I remember being being very annoyed by the owl bloody talking to me that one time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, if I had this bloody meerkat thing talking to me, I I can't a flying meerkat. Yeah, it's like... what what makes you think kids have more patience than adults? They have less patience. Yeah, it's just like <laughs> it's just like seriously, shut get on with it, fuck up. Ugh. It's like it, was, it, it wouldn't have minded if the, the, those cutscenes were all right. You know, watching your cats have a bit of a frolic. You know, yeah, yeah, it's fine. But and but there's no need to be talking about it the whole time, and oh, and, and stupid little things like when you do a contest, which is literally about five meters away from the central area you're playing, and you you saw this when you go back to the central area where you're supposed to be doing this, he goes, "It's good to be back," and it's like you've not <laughs> been away been two minutes. <laughs> you were literally just there. I can see where I was. <laughs> right. Uh, I think we better move on to a bit of Pokemon because we're going to need to talk about Bortle and that's going to take a while, so... Get the peas out of the way. Is that alright? Is there anything else you've been playing? Yeah, fuck it. Is that alright? <laughs> <laughs> fuck it. Okay, because Pokemon, I reckon there'll be something to talk about. Is that well, correct? I, I'll just summarise quickly. Connect is good, but now that I've toyed with one, I'm not sure I can recommend it as a purchase just yeah. yet. When Dance Central 2 comes out, then decide. <laughs> That's what. Well, yeah, if you want Dance Central as a workout, or actually, if you want the fitness programs, which are supposed to be good, yeah. and you're willing to spend the money for it, then by all means, go ahead. Much better it's, than we fit, I would say. And actually, value for money for... With those actually, if you thing. think about it, because it is such cutting-edge tech, yeah. and you're having to put the same amount of money down as you would to invest in Move, yeah. um, actually, value for money-wise, it's probably the best pick of the bunch. Yeah. Um, but it will be interesting to see what they, how they go from here. Knowing Microsoft, they're probably going to do a better job than Sony. So oh, we shall see. Yeah, we shall see. So anyway, connect so, yes. over. Zach, what have you been playing that isn't Portal? <laughs> hmm. I guess it has only been Pokemon, really. Cool. I'm mean, trying to think of anything else. With the farting Pokemon, it seems. <laughs> Well, they are the ridiculous, crappy sound effects as usual. So inevitably, some of them were going to sound like farting in one way or another. <laughs> but obviously more intentionally in some cases. Oh. Not quite like that. Oh. <laughs> There's no creaky door thing on. <laughs> <laughs> creaky door, that would be a great thing for. <laughs> I'm surprised there hasn't been... Well, I guess there has been... <laughs> what, are you surprised, surprised there haven't been Pokemon though. based on inanimate objects? Yeah, like, I was about like to say I'm surprised there haven't been, but there have, so... <laughs> <laughs> I guess that... There's, in, like, in Black and White, there's one that's, like, a candle. 
Okay. And then mean, like, that, that evolves the into like a lantern. <laughs> is there a candle? No, it's a candle stick. What about an office pieces? chair? Has there ever been an office chair? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to think of whether what other ones that have been, have been based on an inanimate object. I suppose well, you could argue that a Voltorb is sort of an inanimate object in the fact that it's like a giant, huge Pokeball. Go, I choose you, Couchy. <laughs> Some couchy. couchy. <laughs> Dining room table. <laughs> <laughs> dining room, dining room, dining, dining room. room. Dining <laughs> Well, there was that. Well, there was that Pokemon from Gold and Silver that was just a pine cone. <laughs> That's awesome. With eyes, of course. Is there a banana-based one? That would be sweet. I don't think there is. <laughs> banana Mon. It doesn't. Oh, don't really have to change the name there. I but. suppose there's one that's like a palm tree. <laughs> Or I, that's I suppose, sort of banana. Well, and yeah, pseudo widow is kind of a tree, which is a bit funny in itself. Yeah, I pseudo. Yeah, it's a pseudo, pseudo, pseudo tree. <laughs> yeah, it's a pseudo, unfortunately. <laughs> Uh, so on. anyway, I guess well, I played back some more, and then like mm-hmm. I got all the gym badges before I got halfway around the map, which means this game is really not over yet. Could there be a microbial mobile mobile phone called Cellular? <laughs> yeah, see what I did there. Yes, it's quite clever. <laughs> so you can't, you can't just... <laughs> in some certain in some ways of thinking, it might be quite clever. I don't know about <laughs> <laughs> Rob thinks he's clever. <laughs> And that's all that matters. That's all that matters. Apparently. But um, I got all the gym badges and then it's like, I'm going, I'm just like, I'm going to go up Victory Road and go to the Pokemon League and it's like, there's clearly at least three more towns after this. So it's quite weirdly, it, it seems really weirdly paced for a Pokemon game because normally you get to the Elite Four and that's the end. Yeah. <laughs> but in this game it's clearly not the end. So it, that's why it seems like I've been going through the gyms really fast because I have been essentially but it's not. No, because there's more to the they're game. They're not spaced out in the same, like, the gyms aren't the whole game any longer. It's doing what Red Dead did. You think you're finished, but there is more. Yeah, possibly. Sort of. Although I don't know what more there <laughs> is going then, to be. But then, there's bacon. Yeah. It's going to be quite strange, I So is t- Team Plasma's plan is obviously only halfway through or something? Or you well, can see that it's going to be beyond the end of the Elite Four. Sort of. It's really it's really a dumb plan. One step beyond. Because it's like... It, it's all been starting to be revealed for like they raised this child to be their like king and he's going to be, because Pokemon he's on Jesus that never sounds like yeah, a sort good of. idea does it <laughs> because he's been raised in this very specific way he can become the hero of the region because there's this legend about like a he- hero and the Pokemon and they created the world or whatever it's the <laughs> Pokemon uh, or recreated the it's world Link. Yeah. yeah, it's another link. So it's like they've specifically raised him very carefully to be this hero, and then he goes to the place where the legendary Pokemon is, and he's like, hello, legendary Pokemon. The legendary Pokemon is, is like, well, I guess you are sort of like the hero, so we'll, we'll go with this. I go, although the Pokemon doesn't say that any of that, but, but they that seems to be what the, seems to be what happens. It's like the legendary Pokemon just sort of goes along with it. Apart from the legendary Pokemon is split into two, and it's like, I wonder who the other half might be for. Oh, that, could that be me? Could it be you? <laughs> so obviously you're going to like catch up with the bad guy with his legendary half of the Pokemon and at some point your legendary half of the Pokemon is going to turn wait, into wait, a Pokemon wait. rather than being a rock as it is at the moment. Wait, wait, wait. The, so this other this Poke Messiah is a bad guy? Yeah. Well, he's raised by Team Plasma. He's raised by Team Plasma. <coughs> who, <coughs> well, he's maybe that not necessarily really... a bad guy because all he wants is like sort of peace. He's like... We have to free all Pokemon so that we don't make them fight all the time any longer or whatever. So he uh, genuinely so believes in the message rather than just using it for the yeah, end of stealing all the so. Pokemon. Yeah, I suspect so. It sorry, this started was to look more like it. This was in danger of becoming a really, really tragic tale. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, we've raised a child for one purpose that he doesn't want to do. It's like slave labour. <laughs> well, it's well, they're tricking look... the child, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. It, it, there's been hints of it where it's starting to look like that, where it's like... When he's not around and the leaders of Team Plasma are talking to you, they're like, our plan is coming together in yeah. a sort of a more evil way than his Mwaha, sort of, Mwaha. I want to save the world! <laughs> so it's like, I don't know, it's going to get ridiculous probably. The fact that it's like, it's going to be legendary Pokemon fighting other legendary Pokemon, and I've already caught like three goddamn different legendary Pokemon, and there's got at least like another three or something. It's like, they're not, as soon as... This thing happens where he gets a hold of one half of the legendary Pokemon. A shit ton of ones just start appearing all over the place. <laughs> all these, like, literally legendary where it's like they're mythical or whatever. Like, the one that 
makes tornadoes or storms or whatever, and it's like suddenly here's a big rainstorm. Oh, we, well, I guess if you walk around here, you'll find this legendary thing, and then you can just capture it. Because <laughs> obviously, no matter how legendary Pokemon are, you just throw Pokemon at them, and then it's like, I've got you now, bitch! <laughs> <laughs> I've fucked up the weather for the entire world, but I don't know, whatever. <laughs> I think some of the Pokemon would have evolved the ability to just go bat <laughs> and knock the Pokeballs away. But it, hitting them is what causes the Pokeballs to trigger. I, mean, I suppose if they were a psychic Pokemon, I'm sure they could just go... Yeah, Mentally just like... telekinesis them away. Yeah. <laughs> just like, bat away. <laughs> Although I'm guessing, like, the cartoon universe, like, Mewtwo literally does that in some cases. Like, or when they're in, like, the films. Oh, and, and actually in the film, Pikachu, where there's those homing puzzles that are trying to catch him because Mewtwo wants to, I don't know, something stupid. Homing puzzles are chasing Pikachu around and he just, he just shoots them with, like, lightning and they fall out of the sky. I guess that's a very specific kind of Pokemon that's sort of attracted to somehow. <laughs> Have any Pokemon ever tried to capture humans using balls? Well, that would, I, but as soon as they touch, touch the ball, the ball would catch them. Unless the throwing action triggers it somehow. Can <laughs> oh man, DNA. the technology of Pokeballs. Is there some genetic requirement to be able to be the DNA activated put, put yeah. into a Pokeball? Clearly. Mm, it's bizarre. They're still pretty freaky things. So you still haven't worked out the best way of capturing things because they keep running away, right? Or Well, no, there was just this one legendary Pokemon, that, uh, one of these weird, the weather-based legendary Pokemon. You, whenever you, you walk into the, like, the rainstorm or whatever and then you find it and it enters a fight, but then it only ever stays there for one turn before it runs away because it's a legendary bastard or something related to the wind, I guess. So it's flying away from you. I see. So you only get that one chance. So I knocked off most of its health and then it was like, next time I see it for a Pokemon, it's just, it's like, it's not, going I need to make it less healthy than this so but then the thing that I realised it didn't matter how low because I was worried that I'd kill it if I used one of my high level Pokemon to try and chip off more of its health but then I realised it doesn't matter how low a level of Pokemon you use to chip away its health because it never attacks you because it only runs away immediately on its first turn (laughs) yeah so I chipped it down to like no health and then put it to sleep and it was like oh okay I'll just capture it so that was pretty dumb and I also finally managed to get the stupid... Was it, it Was it flying? Yeah. So did it, like, not fall out of the sky horrifically when you put it to sleep in the air? No, they never do. <laughs> well, the fact, the fact is, I put it to sleep and then it ran away. And then the next time I met it in battle, it was still asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I guess, it's, you know, whatever. It just keeps flying, though, it doesn't know what. It just wakes up and it's like, oh, what the fuck's going on? I seem to have fl- emigrated. <laughs> Yeah, the ridiculousness of that system of <laughs> sleeping Pokemon. They, when they fall asleep, they still operate perfectly. Oh, that, that's kind of the weird thing about their sprites in Black and White. It's like, they animate, but when they fall asleep, they close their eyes, but they just have the same animation. <laughs> 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 so they're still, like, jumping around or whatever, and they've just got their eyes closed. <laughs> <laughs> He's dreaming of the exact same scenario. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I finally also managed to get the stupid, weird, web-based, like... Pokemon global link game syncing whatever the oh, fuck you said web based I couldn't work out if you meant internet or spider <laughs> no it internet. is internet Not, you could put a spider in the internet Spidermon yeah <laughs> so that does sound like Jamaican Spider-Man because it's Spidermon Spidermon <laughs> the generic podcast racism <laughs> Good old. So yes, so the internet Pokemon sharing system is working now or what? or it was working well the training always worked yeah but this like Weird upload your save file to the to web game internet thing wasn't working because they had to delay it due to Japan's earthquake disaster shit. What does it do then? Well, <laughs> it's really kind of ridiculous. You like in your game, you select one of your Pokemon to like go to sleep, and then you save your game, and that creates a specific set of data based on some element of that Pokemon. I'm not sure how much it is based on the specific Pokemon you put to sleep. But apparently some of them can't be put to sleep, so there must be some... Something is going on there. Some kind of mystery back, back, background data. Okay. So you you create this save file, and you your game gives you, a, like, a code, which is sort of an equivalent of a friend code, basically. It's linked to the game cartridge and your system and your save file. And then you take that code, put it onto your... Put it on the website with your username, and then that links the two... Links the game to the web username, basically. And then the data that gets uploaded, you enter the enter, go onto the website, and then there's like the dream world, which is basically a 
Flash program. <laughs> He's like, here, play some Flash mini games, lol. And you, and you like go around and like poke things, and but then, so you go into this dream forest or whatever, and you just wander through it. And as you wander through it, random Pokemon will appear, and then and this is where literally any Pokemon can appear. Possibly, I'm not sure if legendaries or whatever, maybe don't know. But so far, I've run into like a Lickitung and then like a Mary. So that's from already from the Red and Gold series. Right. I've got some of those appearing. And then you play a pointless mini game, which befriends them, and then at the end of the walking through the forest, you get the little, like, wish tree or whatever, and then you choose one of them, you pay a berry, which is sort of a currency, <laughs> to choose one of them, to put onto your friend board, and then when you wake up your Pokemon from the dream world, it downloads that into your game, so you can get the things that you've befriended in the internet thing into your game. That sounds complicated. It's... Complicated and yet incredibly not complicated because it's like clearly the childrenness. It's a ch- child-based flash program where it's like okay. incredibly simple mini games type thing. Get more phone ones. So you've done it. So is this the only? This would be pretty drastically bad if this was the only way of getting the old Pokemon. Yeah, that would kind of suck because it's obviously totally random. <laughs> so it's like I downloaded, and I'm not sure if I'm doing it, if I've worked out how this works entirely. But I only managed to get one Pokemon at a time. And it's time limited. It's like, you can only put one of your Pokemon to sleep in the game per 24 hours. Although I think you're allowed to leave them asleep for a longer time. But then you can only access the web game thing for one hour per day. Mm. And then it kicks you out. (laughs) So it's like, I'm not sure. I think you could, like, leave the Pokemon asleep for several days and then have the or one hour per day and then stack up like several Pokemon and then download them all at the same time. Isn't there a, a slightly bigger problem here in the sense that you said that it's quite child orientated this thing but yet it sounds relatively complex to get going. Yeah it's quite it, I mean like, I went and looked at the help pages when I was trying to work out what the fuck I, I was doing what, like getting my stupid email to send where it wouldn't send or whatever and there were specific questions that were worded like how do I set this up for my child or whatever? <laughs> it's like, clearly there is a, they realise that like, getting this to actually function the first time is probably fairly complicated. But I mean, once you've got in, yeah, once yeah. you've got it set, you're probably okay. It's like Nintendo totally missing the boat on friend codes again. Yeah, because they had friend codes, they made it ridiculously complicated. But yeah. And then I downloaded this, I downloaded the Marie. Because it's like that. It's the electric sheep, man. <laughs> I got lucky and found one of the ones that I actually liked first try. Excellent. I can rebuild my gold team. <laughs> Only not, because I have. To, it's incredibly unlikely that I'll find any of the other ones <laughs> for my whole team. But So I downloaded this as like sheep, and it, that's from the gold and silver ages. And I mean. so I, gold and silver. No, well, oh. original gold and silver. Whatever. Yeah. Gold and silver as well. Yeah. But so I got. I downloaded that. And it, it appears in my box, but it, where it says, like, what its Pokedex number should be, it's just got question marks. Because I don't have the, the Pokedex that has all the other ones. Where do you get that, then? I think you only get that after the end of the game, where they, oh. where that's when it unlocks them to appear in the world normally. Oh, so it's kind of strange that I can actually do this before I've even got to that point. It's like, I can get stuff from the other games before I've got to the point in the game where the stuff from the other games appears in the game. <laughs> hmm. Neat in a way. So sort of you could cool. train up that Marie and use it against the F- Elite Four if you want to. Yeah. Oh, it cool. seems like it. There's no. Sheep for victory! So, uh, yeah, I could totally get weird out of game Pokemon. I wonder, uh, it's like, I haven't seen anything rare yet, really. It's just been these normal, regular things. Freaking sheep, motherfuckers. That's all I wanted. The electric sheep. Maybe I can, it's like, if I could just reform my gold team, I'd just get rid of all my black and white team. Because yeah, yeah. my gold team was clearly superior. <laughs> But yeah, so that's that weird... That's what turned out to be the weird web-based thing. Hmm. And it does have some elements of a friend system. Although, naturally, that is a yet another sort of friend code situation where your your web-based friends are based on your in-game friends. and But, like, people you've traded with in the game, you can see their names on the web interface, and it's a different name because you're using a username for a web page, which is different than your game name, because obviously hmm. those wouldn't be registered or whatever <laughs> so it's quite a ridiculous confusion of names and friend codes again 
My brain hurts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not feeling quite so clever anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, talking about Pokemon dumbs you down. Yeah. Well. But then, <laughs> so yeah, you get like friend, friend, like friends in the dream world, and then you can like go into their house and water their plants and trade items on your trading shelf. You're like doing chores for other people, then. But it gives you points. Have they, made, have they made Farmville for Pokemon? <laughs> not that bad. <laughs> Sounds a bit more like Animal Crossing. Yeah, maybe. With the houses. But more simplified than that, even. Yeah. It's not complicated. Which makes it, like... It's one of those Pokemon things where... Pokemon and Animal Crossing are quite a good match in some ways. Yeah, like feature, I guess. Feature tr- transfer. <laughs> yeah. But it seems like... Because it's so simplified, and, like... Do you think they could MMO or eyes? Pokemon. Pokemon. Well, well they always wanted to, yeah. then, really. That would be ridiculous. Although you can't put <laughs> MMOs and children is a bit of a weird mix. I mean, now there's that Lego World Universe thing, isn't there? Yeah. It's like an MMO for children. I don't know how uh, successful that's been. Do things like Club Penguin count as children MMOs? Hello or... Kitty Online. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Who knows what that fuck is about, though? Hello Kitty. Yeah, well, any game I mean, where you can like send text to each other is inherently not safe for work <laughs> as soon as it goes on the internet. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, not, it's inherently not safe for kids, is exactly. it? Exactly. Consider the grooming possibilities. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to consider that. Right. I thought it was funny that the PC Gamer guys were interviewing the Lego like, Universe team, but none of them, this was a while back, uh, not that long ago. Anyway, none of them had heard of Minecraft. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah. man, that must suck. And you think Lego Universe. <laughs> what? That's pretty bad. Yeah, actually. I mean, Minecraft is basically Lego. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they were like going uh, Minecraft. La 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 yeah, la la. I don't want to know. Maybe. La la la. Oh, I think maybe they'd heard of it, but none of them had played it. <laughs> la 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 la. I got this thing. Yeah. Anyway, I wonder, I wonder if Minecraft really sort of gels with kids as well. Really. Well, maybe, maybe the sheer wow. level of involvement required. It's well, com- what's his neo game on Penny Arcade has said that his child, who's also called Game, <laughs> has been playing it a lot and building castles and shit, so I guess it's not that complicated. Wait, 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 he named, he actually named yes. his child Gabe, yeah, but he's not called Gabe. Yeah, he's he? not, he's not called Gabe, oh, apart from the comic yeah, universe, yeah. he is called Gabe. No, in which case that's actually sweet. Yeah. <laughs> apart from, it's gonna suck when he grows up and then he'll have all these webcomics which has his name in it. <laughs> It's got my name on it. No, it's pretty cool. It'll be cool, apart from he'll, uh, he, he will appear to be a bastard. <laughs> Gabe's yeah. awesome. Yeah, but Gabe's cool, though. Yeah, he's not... I don't know. He will appear to be gay as well. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> webcomic Gabe is super gay. It's all <laughs> Bobby Horse Avengers. And Spider-Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's super gay, but with a wife. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wife, man, that's, that's gonna be kind of confusing anyway. So, Pokemon, yeah, I guess there's not much else to say about it. I need to finish the game thing, okay. <laughs> then got to do back some grind. After you know what actually so happens, even more. what's your hour count on that now? That must be fairly ridiculous. Does it have a stat? Yeah, so on your save file, it oh, yeah, hour hours. I don't know. I haven't looked, I've been trying not to look. <laughs> this is depressing <laughs> when you figure it's that a out. lot of hours, I guess. Oh, god, but like, I mean, there was that whole lot of grind. Probably the actual playing the game part hasn't been that long. <laughs> and you get through it so easily once your team starts levelling. It's pretty ridiculous. I'll probably blow through the Elite Four really easily, I suspect. Right. Is that a good phrase to use? Blow through? Mm. Nah, it's fine. Okay. I don't... That just joking. Quite, you'd have to do <laughs> some mental gymnastics to... I'm just, to, I'm just joking. To... to, to does, this, does this mean I'm having a clever moment? <laughs> <laughs> clever dumb moment. Clever yeah. dumb, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Trying to work blowjobs into every situation. <laughs> that doesn't sound, that sounds like a noble endeavour. Yeah. A noble endeavour. <laughs> yes. Anyway. Right, I heard that a game came out this week. Woo. On the on the PC. You might have heard of it. Yeah. Do we need to talk about the approaching to it coming out situation? Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or is that really irrelevant at this point? Well, talk us through, po- yeah, talk well. through the potato-ness, because my opinion of it all was that it was a colossal waste of time. Well, we had based, well for us... Because it, it only really affected the... It basically, it was going to be a midnight release on Tuesday in America, and through the whole potato effort... It 8 o'clock in the morning or something for us. Yeah, right? through the whole potato effort, they got it down to a midnight release on Monday. So really for us, in any case... So they shaved a day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
No. So in e- any case, it would have been crap for us because it would have been at some ridiculous time in the morning. Well, well, no, it would have been like eight in the morning, which is fairly reasonable because people would wake up and then play the game and then have to go to work. Well, because yeah, it's true. a Monday, <laughs> but it was. Oh no, it wasn't bank holiday this week, was it? No, no, I, I just had it off. Yeah, you had it off, so I guess it worked for you. <laughs> Yeah, it would have been alright for me. This is not, uh, just to clarify, I didn't plan my week off just for the release of Portal 2. Like a lot of people did, supposedly. Yeah, I, I, I was doing more more fun things with my time. There's been some <laughs> funny pictures on the internet of like notices posted up by bosses and professors saying, there's been a lot of people voting in with mysterious stomach complaints and things <laughs> of late, or their mm. cat's been sick or something. Just to let you know that uh, uh, you, uh, we, w- I've cancelled the lecture so that you guys can play Portal Two, but <laughs> <laughs> yes. but the exam's still on or whatever. <laughs> it's quite a few funny messages like that. Yes. So um, what? So what happened with the potatoes count again? I, can't, I don't understand that. The pot- In addition to all the games played and it shaving the time. You had the potato count at the bottom, and that went into reverse or something. Did you say? Yeah, it's like it went the, up, and then each went of down. the individual games were getting like once they accumulated a certain amount of game time per game. Yeah, yeah. It would knock a certain amount of time off the release release date. Yeah, and then the potatoes were get got you got them from doing like ridiculously obscure things in each of the games. That's right. Yeah, like the audio surf thing. Some of them were more obscure than others. The audio surf one was fairly obvious because it put you into that level. If you try, well, no matter what song you picked, it yeah. automatically shoved you into that level. And then if you got the gold, you got the potato, which was pretty tough. To be honest, I didn't quite. Yeah. I didn't make it. It, it. You had to. You pretty much had to hit every companion cube on the level to do mm. it. So that yeah, it was a bit tough. But then, so once once those potatoes had accumulated to about 500,000 or something, I wasn't paying attention to what the actual number I was. Think was I think I was asleep at the time it happened. But um, and once it accumulated a certain number, they started counting down, and that boosted, like, well, it reduced the amount of playtime the games that hadn't finished needed to accumulate to finish. Oh, that's it. To, to, to help along the ones that were lagging behind. Yeah. So, so you don't do anything else for no. no. So was the extra day shaved off by this weeks of effort? Was that a one day off the original release date, or did the first part of the AIG also knock back the release date? Well, because like, I thought it was supposed to be coming out on the twenty fourth, which is still two days away. I'd already, I had, I had always seen the nineteenth, I think, okay, as the release date on Steam when they actually changed it to not just say April. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But then the ARG, I guess the ARG did kind of have its own little extra bonus for some people, <laughs> because like apparently like seven of the people, no, wait, nine of seven, seven or nine, seven of nine, no, just seven or nine, seven or nine of the people of the like best so- puzzle solving people off the ARG who like deciphered the codes or whatever, they got taken to Valvechi to play the game early, basically. Oh, cool. <laughs> I heard a number of people who got like every potato or something actually got the uh, the Valve complete pack. No, they didn't. That didn't happen. No, no it, that was a rumor, and then everyone was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna get my golden potato. I'm gonna get the Valve complete." And then it didn't happen, and everyone was like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they were it's... pissed. <laughs> I can't work out. out Steam already have most of the Valve yeah, products. Yeah, no, That's, the That's also the other. Thing. I can't work out if this whole thing was absolute genius. Or fucking annoying because you know it's just kind of like all of that for one day of benefit is pretty ridiculous. But on the from Valve side, they must be going, "This is excellent. Look at that. That was the best marketing campaign ever." Well, the, but... the funny thing about it is apparently the whole ARG, like everything about it, was designed by the indie game developers. It's like Valve just kept, brought them in and said. We want you to design a thing to like make Portal Two release slightly early, and then just left it to them to make the whole system. Oh, really? Huh. <laughs> so Valve actually weren't anything to do with the ARG other than allowing it. Yeah, pretty much. So, do you think that this ARG has been more successful than I Love Bees or any previous one? Oh, almost certainly. I think <laughs> yeah. it's had. I think it's had a lot more of a. Um, you know, it's been much more in the forefront. Well, I don't know if it's driven sales as much as like. Other ARGs, necessarily. 
I mean, well, no, 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 I think it has. I think it definitely has. If maybe it drove sales of the indie games. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, it's, it's a massive help to the indie game guys, and that's that, that's always going to be a good thing. But the uh, if it made anyone buy Super Meat Boy, then yeah, exactly. exactly. Um, I think it will have driven Portal up because of uh, the awareness will have been far larger. I think you know, well, maybe far is a bit of an extent, but it will have been larger because of it. So it definitely will have driven sales up. And, you know, the hype engine was in full swing, let's be honest. There's not been... I don't, uh, it's been a long time, I think, since I've known hype of this level for any game. I mean, they've screwed up hype in the past. I mean, Half-Life 1 didn't have any hype, which was bizarre, uh, which was really weird, because a lot of games did have hype at the time. Like, Quake 2 was hyped. Half-Life didn't oh, have Quake any. Quake 2 was hyped a lot. Half-Life yeah. just came out of nowhere. Uh, uh, and then Half-Life 2, they had problems because they had to delay it so massively. Like, it, the, the hype was kind of building in a traditional fashion. Mm. And then they had the source code stolen and stuff. Yeah. They had all those videos that they'd released and everything, and they were trying to build it, and then it all went a bit horribly wrong for mm. them, hype-wise. But this one, they've really... You know, knocked it out of the park on getting just the right amount of hype at just the right time, didn't they? I suppose still crazy hype. The bit that sort of, as yeah, I say, my argument was going to be where I was going with this was, I can't work out if it was genius or has actually just wound up the people that put all the effort into the ARG because at the end of it, it's like we did all that for one fucking day. Yeah, well, well, I think they are. It's like. If you discount the bit before the official countdown page where it showed the potatoes and everything appeared, if you discount the like the puzzle solving part of it, because we don't know what effect, if any, that actually had, apart from discovering where the potatoes were, I guess. Mm. But once the countdown page appeared, the timer on it said 96 hours. So everyone who saw that must have known that the best they could do was to knock 96 hours off it. Yeah. yeah. It's like, <laughs> you can't really not play that anyone. much. Yeah, really, at that point. I mean, they knew they were close to release. Yeah. Anyway. So how much did they think they were getting the game? But, really? sure, but surely that was the least difficult part of the whole thing. I'm not sure the most difficult part of the ARG was the initial figure out where everything was. Yeah, but that's what crazy AR- a- crazy ARG playing people do it for the love of doing it rather than for and the rewards. they do it hella fast. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they do it to prove how clever they are, uh, which is very clever, to be honest. Whereas grinding just requires a lot of people with not- nothing to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's kind of two-stage thing. It included more people in the... ARG, as it were, than mm. would normally play an ARG, because I would have no, have no idea. I mean, I might look into it, I might see what other people have done and replicate it and go, oh, that's cool, but yeah, I'd never yeah. be able to figure anything out. It's a bloody nightmare. They're pretty tough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Leave that to it, A bit of me kind of white. I, I feel a bit wound up by it. <laughs> yeah, yes. enough. And I didn't take part. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Other than trying the, Other than trying the audio surf thing, I didn't really investigate any of the other potato opportunities. I read, I, I just like looked at the list of... You know, I just make Well, mash. to be honest, because I only had Audio Surf or Meat Boy to do. Okay. <laughs> so I got the Audio Surf one because I know I'm fairly good at Audio Surf, I guess. Mm. But then when I looked at the Meat Boy one, it was like, it was some ridiculous thing, like you had to go to a specific level and then die a specific number of times. And it was just like, I never would have worked that out myself. Mm. So it's not legitimate if I now go and do it. It doesn't feel right to just take the information and go and do it. Yeah. That's right, yeah. It's kind of against the point of the whole thing, I guess. But but not that it would have gained anything apart from one more potato into the 500,000 potatoes. Yeah. yeah. It would have gained me anything. So there would have been a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot fewer noble people out there, but that sounds a bit, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they did supposedly organise, like, there was an IRC channel where basically there was about 6,000 odd people who were just organised on the grinding the specific games. So oh, it was okay. like... Was oh, that, why, is that bar... why we saw some of them go up a lot faster than others? Yeah, once they got organised and they were just like, okay, the bar's like 90% full now, so now we can just leave it to the casual people to finish off, everyone move on to the other game. Hmm. Couldn't they have just sort of said, right, a certain percentage of the, of the forum move on to this? And... But they wanted to get each of the individual ones done faster, because once they finished, it knocked the time off, so they, it's like, it, it, in case they didn't finish them all in time, I guess. You want to get each individual one done quicker. Mm. So, yeah. So, Portal 2, I hear that's quite a good game. (laughs) Could you care to comment? I haven't played it. Yes, we have to try and comment in an entirely non-spoilery way. We'd have had to do that anyway. Well, yeah. But uh, if that's possible? (laughs) It's pretty hard. 
Most, it's not that most, well, I, don't <laughs> can, I suppose you can, we can talk about Portal's mechanics and just leave the entire story out of it. Yeah, we can talk about. It's quite hard to talk about time. some of the mechanics without inferring bits of story. But well, let's talk about the bits we knew about, like bridges and gels and things like that. My general opinion of it is kind of it's a little bit meh in terms of mechanics and gameplay. Story is fantastic. You know, it's it's good, even if it feels, as I mentioned before, feels slightly less funny than the original because no one was expecting the original to be funny. That's right. Yeah. Um, so in this in this next one, it's like, well, it's kind of got to be funny. So when you're expecting the jokes, they have less of an impact. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, um, uh, it's, but in terms of mechanics, it just kind of feels a bit more of the same. It doesn't feel particularly ingenious. You know, compared to the original concept, it's like the original concept of having portal-based gameplay kind of was like, okay, wow, that's actually pretty clever, nice one. Yeah. But now that they've just sort of expanded on it a bit, it doesn't really feel quite so mind-blowing. Well, it anymore. doesn't seem like they're using the portals nearly as much. It's like no, you some virtually of the, some of the never channels do don't... actual flinging, and you, that was quite that was like because they only had the portals to work with in the first game. That was all they had was like the fleeing. So you used it all the time. But then they used it in a lot of variety, like interesting ways. I mean that bit in Portal One with the giant room towards the end with all the turrets in the, their little alcoves, and yeah. you have to get right to the top of that, and you have to fling them out three or four times to yeah. get to the top. That's like way cool it's like, and quite hard to do. It's like because they only had the portal mechanic to work with in the original. They had to create a lot of puzzles based only on that mechanic. Yeah. But now they've got all these other mechanics, you get much fewer puzzles per mechanic, so they don't feel mechanic, expanded yeah. enough. I wonder if they're playing the community game on this one. Because or the DLC game. Or the DLC <laughs> game, yeah. Because don't get me wrong, the, 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 yeah, the, yeah, I know exactly what you're saying, the mechanics are there, but there's you get like three or four levels that uses a particular yeah. mechanic, and then you're on to another one. Yeah. Uh, and the other one is pretty much taken out of the picture. It Most seems. of the time. It's like, it's not, like the they're... gels cross over slightly, but then you don't get, like, very much, you know... It's like the lasers don't interact with the gels, really. Yeah, there's not many puzzles where there's a combination of things, is there? Like, you have, this is a gel puzzle, and this is a laser puzzle, and this is a a, a aerial faith plate fu- puzzle. Yeah. And, uh... I seem to remember saying something similar like, about, like this about another game on the podcast, but I can't remember what it was. One where it, you know... What segregated all the puzzles Yeah, out. or segregated the mechanics out so you don't use them in a clever combined way. Oh, I what think it might it? have been when I was talking about Create, um, which I haven't played, but the reviews suggested oh, that, that was the, done as well. Oh, the Incredible Machine thing. Yeah, EA's attempt at doing a, oh, right. a, a, a reinvention of the Incredible Machine theory, um, but didn't really... Succeed, yeah. Where each mechanic is basically in its own level, really. Yeah, and it's incredibly guided in the sense that you probably need to use this, uh, or it wouldn't let you use any other anything else to come up with your own solution. Yeah. Um, so, in, in actual fact, it wasn't really much of a creation at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, how long did you get stuck? There's been a couple of bits where I've struggled, mainly because it's been hard. And I tried to explain this to Zach in, in a sort of in some way, but it's kind of hard to explain. And I think I found it difficult in places to see where I could actually put portals. Well, they're normally course, pretty good at indicating it. Yeah, it's like don't get me wrong. I think white paint and then a lamp pointing at it. Yeah, <laughs> but, but there are times where they're like, like ludicrously high up or completely well, yeah. vertical, and it's just like just trying to find them amongst the quite relatively well detailed areas. It's like that, that's why they put in the zoom function. It's like, like Yeah, the zoom is useful. <laughs> Once you realise where it's like, oh man, these environments are ridiculously huge and for some reason the portals are miles away, you're like, oh I better use the zoom. <laughs> the, the, you do need to travel some quite longer the distances you need to think or, you know, work out how to travel are now much larger in some sections. But those aren't really for. It's, it's not like, it's not like they're more long complicated. Distance they're, just, they're just longer. It's just like Spotting the location of far, far away, which is great for the setting that you're in, yeah, and it makes sense for the setting, but it makes the gameplay in those instances just a tiny bit more irritating. It's meant to slow it down, I guess. Oh, they, make, they do make use of the Emancipation Grill now as part of the puzzle now in places. Oh, well, cool. they did that before, though. Did they? Well, where you have to avoid them, where you like you flung through a grill 
and it destroys all your portals and there's that one where you have to get a ball around the corner of it because your portals go away oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. through them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The grill, yeah. That was a good one. But they, one they, was... they, there are some puzzles that don't outright say or aren't completely obvious about this. There's, there's a couple of the flinging bits where you have to sort of avoid the use of one. I guess those... And... I've, I, if I, I'd say those the emancipation grids are maybe more important than the cult ones. For, for the act of getting rid of your portals. Because oh, okay. then they're sort of limiting you to one person has to stay on one side of the grids and use their portals, and then the other person has to go through or whatever. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. They're maybe more important than in the co-op. The emancipation grids. <laughs> and the preservation of mass achievement. <laughs> was pretty cool regarding those. So you guys have got pretty awesome PCs. How does that thing look? Pretty good. Um, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, pretty it's, good. it's Source Engine. Let's be honest. It's it way too many loading engine. times, is yeah. what it is. Yeah, no, I, I was, I was going to sort of come to that in a bit. Portal 2 loading. Is holy shit, least? there's a lot of loading pauses. <laughs> yeah. It's not that they're lo- particularly long loading pauses, there's just a fuck ton of them. <laughs> it's like every chamber has its own section and there's a loading pause as for each one. There are 30 second cutscenes that have a loading pause book ending each end of it, and it's like... That's not very good. Sorry, guys. That's pretty pants. We've seen Source Engine, especially in Half Life Two, do some fairly enormous areas without a problem. But then, as I was saying, what's to Dan, the problem here? Like now that now that they've sort of increased the detail and how good it looks, I think it's just that they have, it's like increased detail, but that means they can only load a smaller area. <laughs> but surely they've scaled that to the modern machine. I don't know, surely RAM size has gone up significantly. Maybe it's the engine that's limiting that, though, rather than RAM size. They need to work out how to load in the background like Halo 1 did. (laughs) I mean, come on. Well, yeah, they need to develop a streaming technology. I was having that exact conversation earlier in the week. Having seen Halo 1 handle enormous areas, like, ten years ago... I mean, nowhere near as detailed as anything in Portal 2. But it's like the fact fact is, even so... It's like in Portal 2... They they did this nice thing where if you walk into one of the lifts and there's a bit of hilarious dialogue going on, mm. it doesn't it go doesn't immediately trigger, to your loading yeah, screen, it it just, the, the lift course. goes down. But then it's like they made that whole system to have the lift go into an infinite shaft while the person is still talking. It's just an infinite, like, slightly lit black shaft mm. that it loops into. Yeah. It's like, why could it have not done the loading in the background where that was happening? <laughs> Uh, it's like uh, it's almost they've almost done it except not quite <laughs> I, I think I think in that case yeah it's probably definitely an engine can't handle background loading things, but <laughs> I think that I mean now they've but got they could have just made the areas bigger they've got more graceful loading pauses where it comes to a nice loading screen or whatever instead of it in, always in previous source oh, yeah, engine yeah, yeah, yeah. and all the way back to half life that sort of UI pop up you just sort of well, it used to be, place. it froze, yeah, like you were moving, <laughs> and suddenly you weren't moving, and it said loading in the middle. Tiny and then, text. And then it would come up, or whatever. But in doing that, although it looks a lot nicer, you're sort of violating the Half-Life rule of never take never camera taking you control out of away. The thing. Yeah. Never taking you out of it. It is, it's a bit jerking. I yeah. Realize. They've done some cool things with it, like depending on the section you're in, the loading screen changes. Yeah, that and, is quite um, nice. Which is quite nice. It's well done oh, as cool. well. It makes sense, given the story. Okay. <laughs> um, and it's, um, but you, uh, there's just no excuse for having so many of them. It's pretty bad. It just seems a bit strange. That's all. But I, I get the feeling that it might have been. Everyone's saying, like, it, you know, and I'm going to get this. This is a kind of a troll argument. A lot of people are saying that, oh, it's a, it's, 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 it's a bad, it's a port. Essentially, yeah. that the PC version is a port of what they were originally working on because of the console adaptations. I don't believe that. I don't think it's a port, but I think they may have had to make. Yeah. concessions in the overall design of the game because of their work on making it available for both Xbox and of course their first entry into the PS3 um, How much RAM does the Xbox and PS3 have? Not much So no. you think that's why it can't load exactly. large areas on the PC because it's But they handled Left 4 Dead fine Yeah and look at Buddy Red But then again I, mean, I suppose the on. areas aren't enormous on Left 4 Dead but they're bigger than Paul Level of detail though mm. But you can ride anywhere in Red Dead and it doesn't have a loading pause. You know, you've got no, to no, no, but as I was saying, it's it's about engine 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 I understand, but, I understand. Yeah. But I, I don't know. I don't know. I think they could have done a better job of it. Or specifically, they could have made the PC version better than it is. But if you think about I it... Kind of, I kind of forgive yeah. the console versions for having that. Because, sure. it, because it's a... Especially on the PlayStation, because it's kind of an out-of-normal environment scenario for them, so they would have had to make limitations. But... Concession, sorry. But uh, PC, really? With all their years of expertise, this is what they went with? Who outside of Valve are making first-person games as, for the PC as a lead platform? Battlefield 3, I'm thinking. Crytek, probably, because Crisis was probably yeah. PC lead. 
I guess, um, but they're, they're really slipping on that with Crisis 2. It's definitely got console kind of yeah, in the yeah, same cause way. Because it, it was Xboxified. Yeah. But hell, it does, it, that's, that's a game that incredibly benefits from it because they've finally written an engine that's good. Yeah. And, 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 well, that's efficient and looks the business. Or scales, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was... Yeah, well, there's no real config options. It just looks the business. I mean, yeah, I mean the <laughs> Crisis Engine was amazing because it could do, but it just it was it not optimized so for anything. So much power. Yeah, yeah. So whereas the Crisis Two Engine looks fantastic it's, it's and awesome. requires, you know, a, 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 what is now a normal PC. Yeah, but yeah, but I'm just saying there aren't many developers with PC as a lead. I mean, Valve no, are I guess the not. PC I suppose mar- F- gaming market. I suppose now, Bulletstorm like, was with Steam, Xbox targeted. Yeah. Epic, I mean, epic Xbox target now. Basically, um, yeah. Um, yeah, I suppose you're right. There aren't, yeah. there aren't many. There's, there isn't anyone else. So Valve, are, that's they the... should. Have... I suppose ID might still count with Rage when that eventually comes out. Maybe <sighs> we really don't know. It, uh, that game looks so old school in some ways. Well, maybe Duke Nukem Forever. You could argue was, <laughs> was, was, was <laughs> PC <laughs> target. Yeah. Good. Yeah, but Gearbox, like, Borderlands apparently just works better. I mean, that's clearly a console game That's in some Xbox ways. targeted. Yeah. Definitely Xbox yeah, targeted. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you can tell, even yeah. from the PC in the face, there are bits that, you know, they are just obviously haven't really quite thought through how it's going to work on a PC. Yeah. And you're saying Bethesda, what, you're saying Fallout 3 is a, is a PC game? No, first. that's definitely no, console. No, that's not true. So. I don't know, I think they could have just made that engine that bad. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but... <laughs> That's quite true, but it probably runs just as shit on the PC. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Skyrim apparently looks good, but not interested. No, me either. Anyway, yeah. So Pet Portal Two, because we really Patch need to spend all of this last bit yeah, of the podcast talking about it. So well, we've got like ten minutes. Yeah. So, uh, what else do we need to say about it? That's not spoiling. We need to talk about how well, it's not need... very long. <laughs> well, well, I don't know. What well, I'm five hours in, and I must be getting near the end. Yeah. It seems to me that it's about the length of a typical modern Call of Duty campaign. It's a bit shorter than that. Yeah, like, I would say so. Really? Well, seven or eight hours is the normal, and I'm five hours in and near the end, so yeah. this, this cuts under. About six. This is six. Def- this, is def- this is definitely undercunting. Uh, under- undercunting? Smooth! <laughs> 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 That's a BBC error right there. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely undercutting what is the normal length for a shooter experience, but it's probably... Actually, when you say it a bit, I've just had a sudden realization. Some yeah. of that extra time in shooters is probably through replaying of sections because you die. Yeah, like in Portal, I've never really died that much. <laughs> yeah, but, well, you get yeah, stuck. but so what we're saying basically is we're too clever. Yeah, we're too clever. We don't cock it up. We don't die, and we don't get stuck on the puzzles. So we're just blowing through it extra fast. If you probably. got stuck, that would be the equivalent of dying, wouldn't it? In a puzzle, it's getting stuck in a puzzle game is the equivalent. You die as well. And it's probably well, more. Fr- know, it's but... probably more frustrating as well, isn't it? It's... Yeah. yeah. What more frustrating than dying over and over again in Call of Duty because you can't see the guy through the smoke? Well, depending on the game. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Nothing, nothing's more frustrating than that. That, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> but then aside from it being like six hours long in. In single player, if you're awesome, <laughs> and then it's like five hours of co-op ish. If you're awesome, although I, to be honest, we did get stuck on some. Of, I say we. I'm talking about me and Kana because Rob didn't turn up in time, and I started playing with someone else. <laughs> you, you, you bastard! Seriously, <laughs> it's all right. We could play together now. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's forsaken his. Uh... You, you've forsaken your co-op yeah, rights. Exactly. Go on then. You just have to have to hurry up and buy the thing. It's like can Rob wait that long? Or me. Or will he no, I'm, I'm fine. I've got plenty of other games to play. I'm not one of the Portal hardcore. Oh, you don't like it that much? I'm not I'm not quite so into the whole Half-Life universe as you guys, so um, I, I, think, I think out of the lot of us, I'm the least fussed. It's not very Half-Life, you <laughs> know. <laughs> but, yeah, you were saying that. But yeah, so um, there's the co-op, and which is like five hours or whatever, but then there's like no advanced chambers or anything. It's like... Yeah, that Where seems... is the awesome puzzle? Well, there's no advance. That seems odd. Oh, that's a bit of an omission. Do you think Especially considering that, that where it's like, the, it doesn't feel like any of the mechanics are explored as much as they could be. It's like, so where, it's like, that's where the advance change is going, be going down the DLC route. Anyway. And it, knowing Valve would be free DLC. DLC you on, on PC. PC. Yeah. But yeah, but to be and fair. And possibly on PlayStation, but Microsoft would never let that through. Yeah. But yeah, the advanced chambers, because all it is, you don't have to make any new geometry, you just need to... Really? Well, you adjust it, don't you? You kind of do. Well, it's all the same of. levels. It's just well, it depends whether they'd consider making advanced chambers or make whole new puzzles, which would be preferable. Well, they'd have to make you pay for that, though, wouldn't you? Whole new areas. I don't know. Well, no, so... it'd be the same 
textures and everything. They'll just do a TF on us, hopefully. Or a Left 4 Dead on us, where it's like, free DLC! Yeah, we'll see. Keep it coming, bitches! Um, I have to say, the one thing I think they've improved in this iteration of Source, though, is the lighting. Yeah. Some of the shadow effects are, and the use of spotlights and things like that are great. Really good direction on those as well. They're not used just for the sake of it. They're used because it makes sense and looks awesome while doing that. <laughs> cool. Do you think Source is a dead end, or do you think it could be continued from here? I don't know. I think there needs to be a significant iteration because they need to allow if that they uh, if, 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 if Zach's if Zach's yeah. theory is right and that they've hit the dead end between maximum detail it can handle based on maximum um, area maximum area, then they're going to have to go back and like do an enormous next step, like you say, like yeah. like you say, Source was the update from Gold Source. Yeah, maybe there needs to be Source Two, you know. Or yeah, whatever. maybe. You know, uh, it, the, perhaps it's getting to the stage where there's not much more they can do. Then, but saying but, that, there are people on the internet describing it as stunning. Well, you know, it, and it's, it's it good does, looking, yeah. but it's not mind blowingly good looking. It's not the best looking game I've ever seen. I mean, I I saw the very start of it and I was like, oh, this foliage or whatever, it looks amazing, and it's like it's like oh whatever. And then I it's and then amazing. I got into like walk it's into right. it and it doesn't move. And no, I was like, oh. I wouldn't say the foliage is amazing looking either. It's just foliage looking, you know. It's <laughs> like, they're fairly large leafed plants. It's not like there's fine detail there or anything. No, it's I just like, meant like the the whole you know what tumble down environment yeah. and stuff. And it just the, the art direction is really cool. But it's, then it is good looking, and most of that good look is on the strength of its animation and art um, yeah. and art direction, not because it's technically proficient. Um, it's it's a step up in the sense that one of the source engines great. And this always has been one of its biggest strengths is its ability to handle quite high texture detail. Yeah, you know nice. how much I love texture detail. Oh, me too. Look at you, Gib. Yep. High and, uh... resolution and high texture detail is so nice. Um, That's why I want a new console generation. More of both of those things, please. Um, and yeah, Source Engine does a very good job with that um, above everything else, and it still does. Yeah. Uh, relatively high poly. Well, it's not even high poly count. It's just high texture detail. Uh, and it does a good job with that. And if their lighting engine is now pretty damn sweet as well, it's still got something going for it. Definitely. It's um, nice. But saying that, it doesn't seem to keep up with the effect heavy engines like Unreal and things like that. Yeah. It's 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 good at different things. There's not really any strangely considering that like Half Life. Two was all about physics, basically. There's not really any like random crap lying around that's physics operable. <laughs> no, it's it's not almost much, all there? static environments. Well, apart from, there's a couple of standout scenes, isn't there, where they're almost entirely physics based, going on around you. But then, you, then because it's a scripted sequence with physics, you can't work out if it's. You're not really just, interacting with it. No, it's you can't work out if the it's physics scripted is happening. physics. Yeah. <laughs> Some of that deformation physics they had for uh, episode two. Oh yeah. Going yeah. On. Like bending sort of metal and stuff. That's cool. I still never finished episode two. It's good. Good episode two. I need to go back and play it really. Because in the, in the off chance they actually make episode three. Yeah, that, that you know you're saying source two. First things first. Bloody release that game. Make episode three and then, then make and then, then make the new source and then make half life three. Yeah, yeah. And then we're away. That's the plan. <laughs> Sorted. Yeah. If, if they if they can do that, then I think the Valve people will be happy. But Portal two, pretty cool. Pretty cool. And the ending is can't find it awesome. Not cool. entirely oh, okay. I haven't got that far, but I'm not entirely sure yet. I can justify full price for it. Again. No, it doesn't. But then again, you didn't really pay full price, and it's not well, really. We got, a... we got a bit. Of... Oh, I haven't paid you yet anything yet yeah, but because I you owe, bought my I, copy. I, but... I owe you cash anyway. So well, yeah, I think you're for like clear. pizzas and shit. Oh, oh, okay. Anyway, yeah, <laughs> I'll consider that another thing. <laughs> the pizza tax. Yeah. <laughs> but we, it's like we, it's not even really a full price game, even at normal price. Sort of. It doesn't. It's feel... very slightly discounted, but yeah, it's still it probably not even worth that. No, it's 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 about the right. You know, if you were to buy it now, it's about the normal price for a new PC game. But it doesn't feel big enough to justify that price tag. Mm. Not without any kind of. Well, I say without yeah, yeah, replayability but, or whatever. You know, there's, there's, I mean, that was inevitable. You know, it's undeniable that it is one of the biggest titles in PC gaming by a long way. Ever since the first one came out, it's had this air of. Yeah, you know this is special about it, but at the same time, special doesn't mean you can justify enormous price tags. You know, I still don't think Call I think Call of Duty milked that as well because that is special, but it's special in terms of sales as well, and it's 
you know, there's something funny about that. It's, you know, it doesn't mean you, I can like it anymore. You know, obviously... I, it's hard to get my words out here. I think we're reaching the limit. <laughs> I yeah. actually wanted to v- say very slightly about the ending without doing any kind of spoilers. Got You've got time. a minute and a half. Oh, uh, that'd be plenty. But there's this thing that happens right at the end, uh, which is basically what you do that is, like, the last action of the game and gets you the last, you know, the end of the game achievement or whatever. Okay, yeah. And... When it happened the first time I was, was playing through, I did the thing that it wanted me to do almost instantly without even thinking about it. Oh, so you missed some dialogue. No, but it's like I did it instantly without thinking about it, which must... 60 seconds. It must have mean that it, 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 it had, like... I just done it sub- subconsciously without even thinking about it, and it was, like, totally awesome. And then when I thought about it afterwards while it was doing its whole end sequence stuff, I was like, oh, shit, man, that was, like, something that was mentioned sort of casually, like, several hours ago, which has come to fruition. And it's like, was I just subconsciously acting on that? And it was like, that was just so awesome, where it's like, oh, man, totally wicked. It's like they've got this, <laughs> wicked. Ridic- got this ridiculous story hook that had somehow penetrated my subconscious into making me do this thing. It's, Almost it's, instinctively. It's, that's <laughs> okay. a subliminally major and it, finish. And it was game. just like, it was like a total payoff to the whole, like, situation when it happened. And it was like, oh, 20 man, seconds. It, it all makes sense. It all links together. Awesome. Well, you'll hear more about that <laughs> and other Portal 2 matters yeah, uh, next time. Yeah, once you finished it so we can talk about yeah. it. Yeah. Although, say bye. Bye. So more probably say next goodbye. time. But for the time, thanks for joining us on the Soundcast. More Portal 2 and many other games next time. Bye. Go buy it. Bye. Maybe.